been trying to to go through the exercise and uh, if they can show the results or if they have some uh, difficulty that before we enter into the session of today please uh, go ahead mr tayudul yeah uh, yesterday i tried to calculate sdg 2.3.1 and 2 but i faced uh, some problem uh, i have tried to calculate uh, uh, using his data uh, but uh, what data are available in the data set, what data are available and what are not, first I discuss, then what uh, problem I face, I will discuss. The, in the questionnaires, I have seen in section seven, part B, production of crops and its sales price available against household within the last 12 months. It is available. And uh, like uh, livestock and poultry and, uh, and its uh, sales price is available. It's okay. But uh, the data which are not available, no data available on number of days work against the product and number, number of data, uh, no data available on production cost of agriculture product. These data are not available. These are the problems to calculate the SDG2 and so. But an, another problem I face in the data set, we collect, uh, in, we collect data against household, not for each uh, producer. In that case, household will be the uh, each producer. I, can't, I don't understand this. Again, and, and number two problem phase, constant selling price of the product, that does not mean uh, constant selling, constant selling price we collect nominal price. In that case, uh, uh, what, what do we do for the constant price? Second, price, second uh, problem is that. And another question I, I arise, why we do not consider the byproduct of each product? It's another, uh, it's my questions. And another question I feel, how do you calculate household weight in each uh, in your slide 14 uh, that you have shown in the uh, last day. These are the questions I feel. If I uh, got this problem, then uh, if I got the uh, data available, then I think I will uh, estimate the SDG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. Uh, uh, then what is your solution? First solutions, you, uh, you have uh, I first face uh, some of these producers, but we have collect data against household. In that case, household will be the uh, 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 small scale uh, producers. First, this problem. Then how do we calculate the uh, uh, available number of days work against the product? These are the problems. What is your solution? Okay. Please. <clears throat> so shall we go <laughs> through these questions before? Before, before you uh, go to answer this you know, uh, question, you know, let me add something on, on top of this. Uh, this highest is the, you know, the target of highest, household income expenditure survey. So this has a, uh, something frame. And it may miss some of the aspect of this, you know, identifying the uh, small holders. So we should, we should have to, uh, think that one, but as there are information that we can try, you know, incorporating those and calculating the indicators. At the same time, what I, I remember, Ida was, you know, saying that, you know, plot-wise information would be required, you know, one plot, what was cultivated, what was the price, something like that. Uh, now in the household one, you will find aggregate, the total area they have used, yeah. and the total production they got, and the, the price. So will it harm this in the you know, calculation of the indicator? This is another part, if you answer collectively. Okay, so shall we go through these questions because there are uh, several questions here. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Before taking another person. Okay. Yeah, I am not sure I got all the points, but uh, if I understand, first of all, the main source is the household income expenditure survey that you, you are trying to use the data yeah. coming from that one. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, uh, depending on the survey, the statistical unit could be a household or could be a holding. 
Now, if you take the household survey, the statistical unit is a household. So what we are concerned here for this computation is the household which are involved in agriculture. So for example, we are talking about the LSMS ISA from the World Bank and the component ISA means exactly, uh, this is the component dealing with the agriculture aspect. So we are concerned with the households engaged in agriculture because you can have households engaged in different things in the household income expenditure survey. But here we are concerned with the households which are engaged in agriculture. So we, we narrow down to this household and this is where we can make the computation because for the others, you will not find the variables, of course, because they are not engaged in agriculture. So, so, even so, house, so, yes. house, so we consider household as a producer. If it is engaged in agriculture. Yeah, yeah, yes. If, if say, in yeah, we make this, uh, yeah, I, you, you, are, you are right. We make this, uh, it's a kind of approximation. You are right. Yeah. So we, we approximate. So the theory is that uh, in the rural area, almost 90 or 80% of holdings are uh, households are engaged in some kind of agriculture. So we assume we, we approximate the, the holdings, the households engaged in agriculture with the holdings. It's an approximation. Yeah, you are right on that. So okay. we, we, we narrow down on this and then we do the computation on this. Uh, this uh, subpopulation of uh, the, the household slash holdings that are engaged in agriculture. Agriculture in the broader sense, eh? so it's uh, crop, livestock, fishery, and, uh, and uh, agroforestry, not the forestry in the open, but the agroforestry. So- a a Another question is, I have a, another question. We yeah. have used the volume of productions of crops uh, livestock, but why we do not consider the uh, byproducts of it? I think the pro byproducts are, 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 are listed. If, if you look at the list of. Consider. Oh, we consider. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the you, if you look at the uh, list of the products, it's included. Oh, we also consider the byproduct. Okay, okay, then it's okay. Yeah. Uh, now, about the prices. I did not understand very well uh, what you mean by nominal price and uh, overpricing. Oh, uh, I, I, uh, I uh, say uh, a farmer produce uh, rice, yes. and its uh, and its current price we, uh, we 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 collect current price. But what does we mean uh, constant price? Okay. No man, perhaps I can try to answer that. Yes. Um, so, I think what is meant by constant price uh, is related to the fact that when, when you implement a survey, mm -hmm. you, you don't collect all the information at the same time, but like, for example, the survey is implemented in a year time or in a six mm -hmm. month time frame. So the price reported by the, by the farmer may depend on the infra year, let's say inflation or like the, the price variations that you have during the year. Yeah. So uh, normally, like the price that is used is deflated for this in, in yes. annual inflation. Yes. So you take a sort of average price, like a middle year price, let's say, or, or a price referring to, to the, the, the middle of the reference period. Uh, now, if, if that's, I'm, I'm sure that that is not done, uh, systematically in all countries. So if only nominal prices are available or current prices, I think they can be used. Also because like uh, in, in annual inflation could be not very high in, in most countries. Normally you have a very high variation when you have some sort of shocks, big crisis or so. Yeah, yeah I think this is the- I, I, I think that's a good explanation. Is that uh, okay for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I understand. So we will use the inf we uh, consider the inflations of that yeah. period. Okay. And then yeah. we, yeah. 
If you have something, yes, to correct for the in, infra annual inflation, then it would be it would be better. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, and you know it, when you are dealing with this uh, work, you work a lot with uh, proxies because you know the ideal situation does not exist in many countries. Ideally, you should have the uh, the crop and the price immediately. But most of the time, you don't have that situation. So you need to manipulate somehow the data to get as close as possible to this, uh, what you want to put, what is in the formula. But the reality of the formula and what you find in the ground are not, are not the same. So you try to get as close as possible with the, some statistical techniques in order to make, make a consistent uh, calculations. So the price is a difficult one. And even if you don't have the price for some crops, you go to the FAO stat. So this is even more remote than the country price. So uh, yeah, you need to, 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 to be a bit flexible on some of these uh, parameters. Okay, any other okay, okay. intervention? There was one question from Amirul about the household the HI and the Household income consumption survey based on households and the idea was mentioning about the need for cloth level data. I mean, I, I, I think that's not a, a, the main the main issue. Uh, why why Ida was saying the plot level data in most of the cases agricultural surveys started collecting the data at the plot level. No, then we are bringing it to the holding level as you have seen yesterday. Therefore, as Naman was explaining, in most of the cases the holdings in the households, you know, about eighty percent are you know uh, much. Therefore, at the end of the day, we are bringing at the holding level, aggregating even though the data is collected at the plot level. Therefore, if the data, the HIC data has, you know, an aggregated value at the household, at the holding level, then that will be the starting point to, to start computing the, the indicator, as long as we have all the required variables to compute these indicators through this survey. Yeah. Okay. Any other question in the Q&A? Any other person try to, to compute these uh, indicators and what are the issues that uh, you had? And uh, another question is, uh, how do you calculate household weight? You say in the, uh, in your, uh, in the last presentations in slide 14, uh, you, you have seen uh, household one weight four, household two weight five, household three weight 10. How do we calculate this weight? I would like to know. Uh, you mean the sampling weight? Yeah, yeah, sampling weight. Oh, that should come also, from also your uh, sam yeah. sam sampling. sample design and your sampling experts should provide this to the statisticians and the, and the IT uh, people. So it depends uh, on how you, in, what kind in, of sampling design. Uh, in your presentations uh, last day, in, your, in, in, uh, in your slide number 14, you have uh -huh. seen uh, how uh, uh, household number one against uh, weight four again, uh, and household number two, it has weight five. How do you calculate this? Yesterday, yeah. you have seen in your uh, PowerPoint presentations. Yeah, that's what I was explaining that the sampling weight is a reverse of the probability of selecting the unit. Now, this depends on the sample design that you are applying in this survey. For example, as I, show, I indicated in some of my slides, in many countries, you use two-stage sampling. First this, stage, are, this, this word is okay. Here is a household weight. Against a household, every household has a, 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 another a different, uh, yeah, different weight. How, how do we calculate this different weight? Is, is, is it different? Let me, let me, let me you know, clarify, you know, Mr. Tahid. Okay. Yeah, you know this was a you know, small example. So you found that in you know, household one has one weight, household two has another weight. But in nah. your big samples, uh, that, 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 that said within nah. the PSU, all of the household will have similar weights. Yes. And the oh. second uh, second PSU will have will choose a similar. Thing. Mm -hmm. So oh. the yes. exact weight that is the that is oh, the is in, in built oh, is, it, within the survey. It is, you will it use is that not, one actually. Oh, okay. So, it's but it's not how I either presented just you know, an example. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. I think that it is a household weight. Then uh, just it was, it was arbitrary. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this, this was just, you know, these these two households are coming from different uh, sampling units. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yes. why you see different weights as a household level. Otherwise, as I mean, will explain it very well. All households in the same sampling unit will have the same weight. Yes. yes. So I, I have projects in uh, in uh, his data. We have uh, sixteen startups. So we can find he has sixteen different weight. But here he says every but, household but, has a then I, then I it, have questions. It it on your, no, no, it depends on your design. So, design, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the strata usually, you know, you have uh, two stages and you go below the strata. So you have a, I don't know if you use enumeration areas, for example. And uh, so you stratify your universe. And then I've seen in some of your surveys, you distinguish between the livestock, uh, domain, the fishery domain, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, this looks like a stratification. <clears throat> I would like to know about if a household has a, 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 have more uh, cap, um, more livestock and, and, and another household is a, a low uh, livestock. In that case, weight will be different. Now in that case, weight in the same stratum, but in the same PSU. Then it will Mr. Tawhid, Mr. Tawhid yeah. you know, we are not, you know, we, we, we have no right to handle, you know, or modify the, you know, weights. The weights that comes with the sampling, exactly. that should be used as it is. So oh, it does not depend on, it does not depend no, on no, no. how many it is, cattle, it, is how the, many... it is related with the selection property as Namono scaling reverse of the selection property. Oh, okay, okay. So that will be, that will be as it is in the, coming in the uh, survey. Okay. I think that's a good explanation. And anyway, I hope that after this training, we'll have a chance to work together and uh, to, to look uh, closely at the data and see how all these problems you can discuss in more detail. That uh, after this training, probably we can start, start uh, looking at the data, the real data, and uh, see how we can compute the indicators. So if that's all for the questions, shall we move to the... Yeah, yeah, let us move, you know, time-wise, otherwise it will be... Yeah, know, like so yesterday, just a brief summary. Yesterday, we focused on the computation of the SDG 231 and 232, the methodology and particularly the practical uh, exercise with the steps uh, shown by Max, and then the, the illustration with a demonstration, a numerical demonstration uh, by Audrey. So today, we will deal with uh, the, the, uh, another difficult part of uh, the, the, the issue is the data issue. So uh, to introduce the session of today, I think, Ida, are you ready? So Ida will make uh, the first presentation. This will be followed by, uh, I think, importantly presentations uh, from uh, BBS, two presentations from BBS talking about the surveys and the data gap, and then we can see how we can uh, discuss and find solutions for this uh, uh, data gaps. Aida, you have the floor. Thank you, Naman. So uh, just before before that one, you know, can you just you know include Mr. Alauddin and Mr. Uh, Kamrul Islam as the panelist so that they can they can you know participate. No you know. problems. Can they can they raise their uh, yeah. hands? Thank you. Alauddin Bhai and Mr. Kamrul, please raise your hand so that uh, they, you know they can interview. Alauddin Alzad, I found him. Yeah. Okay. And, and become I don't know, but some technical problems. SM Kamrul Islam. And Mr. Kamrul, also raise your hand so that Arjun can easily identify you. Let me know, Faridun. When... Yeah, please go ahead. Please, okay. sorry. Please go okay. ahead. Thank you. So um, let's say that with day one and, and day two, we close all the main, let's say, technical part of, of this training. So we saw 
how to identify smallholders, how to compute the, the two indicators. And now with, uh, with this last presentation, we focus on the main data sources, um, although we, we have uh, largely talked about that during these two first days, and on data disaggregation required for these uh, um, indicators. So I will first uh, provide a recap on, on the important data items needed both for the identification of, of mold scale food producer and the computation of indicators. I will try to be brief on that because you, I, you have heard enough on that and you will also have our slides to, to go back uh, to what has been presented. Then I will discuss the main data sources and some FAO and other international initiatives that uh, that are important for these data sources. And then I will discuss the, um, the data disaggregation in general, let's say in the context of the SDG monitoring framework and specifically for indicator 231 and 232. In doing so, I will uh, uh, briefly present some guidelines that the, um, the Office of the Chief Statistician of FAO has produced to, to support countries to produce this aggregated data. And I will also give an overview of the type of technical assistance that we could offer if uh, uh, you are interested to, uh, for example, to produce this aggregated data of indicator 231 and 232, but also on other like FAO relevant SDG indicators. So uh, as we saw during the, the first two days, we need uh, um, the, like, the data items that we need are needed to identify smallholders and compute the two indicators. So to identify smallholders, you need the data item on the operated land that as we saw is given by the sum of cultivated land with permanent crops, cultivated land with temporary crops and fallow land. And, uh, and in, it excludes all the, the other type of, uh, of agricultural land, such as, for example, the, the, the land for buildings, the forest land, these are excluded from the computation. Then for livestock, you need the number of animals in stock and conversion factors to get the TLUs. For the data on revenues, you need the data to compute the value of crop production, livestock production, and forestry uh, and fishery production. Uh, and the, the, the revenues components have been already presented in day one, but also in day two, but I included them here uh, like as a recap. So you can also refer to this uh, PowerPoint presentation to see the components of the crop revenues. We have already discussed this in detail, the livestock revenues uh, and uh, uh, fishery and forestry revenues. Uh, then the data item needed to compute the indicators. So for what concerns 231 and, and 232, uh, 231, we have uh, uh, two components, the numerator of the indicator and the denominator. So the numerator of the, of the indicator is the revenues and the uh, denominator is the labor input. So let's see a bit more on how, like which are the data that we need to compute the agricultural output, so the value of the agricultural output, and the data that we need for uh, to compute the labor input. So as we said before, uh, it wouldn't make any sense to uh, quantify the, the agricultural output in terms of quantity produced, because we have different types of products that are produced and, and we cannot sum them together like, I don't know, apple with, uh, with oranges. So we have to look at the uh, monetary value of, uh, of production. So uh, for doing that, we need the, uh, let's say, a quantity multiplied by a, a price, so what, what we have discussed before. And the monetary variables need to be deflated. So deflated is what, what we were seeing uh, before. In theory, you shouldn't use nominal or current prices, but you should use the deflated prices, taking into account, let's say, the, the, mid, uh, ref uh, the mid time of the, the reference period of the survey. And then this monetary value should be standardized using PPP conversion factors that you can download from uh, um, uh, a web uh, a website uh, we we have put the link on on the previous slides that have been circulated with, with you both on the slides for day one and slides from from day two 
for, uh, for what concerns the neighborhood, there are various ways to measure the labor input, uh, like, for example, the number of workers used, the number of days worked, the number of hours worked. Of course, it would be much more precise to measure labor productivity in terms of, uh, like, a unit of, of labor, so the, the, uh, in terms of hours worked. Yeah, the problem is that very often in, in surveys, data are not available at this, uh, this level of detail. So the solution that has been adopted is uh, uh, to use the, the number of days worked. So you will have like uh, a productivity where the, the, the unit is the, the labor day, let's say. Uh, so as you know, in, in agriculture, you have uh, like situations where people work only part-time in the agricultural sector and they also have other occupation. So uh, ideally, uh, we should be able to compute the uh, number of working days in full times equivalent. So like the, the working days that uh, um, are equivalent to eight hours of work. So to do so, you would also need the, the number of hours worked by like on average. Uh, in a typical working day um, on the whole thing. If this is not available, you can simply use the number of days work. And all the type of, of labor are considered. So the paid and unpaid uh, labor, including family, hired or exchange labor. So we, do, we don't like really matter if the household or the farm is paying for that, uh, that, uh, that labor, but just to see the amount of labor that is used to get to a certain agricultural output. So now we have uh, indicator 232 that measures the average income of small scale producer. This indicator refers to gross income, so uh, an income that is measured through revenues minus cost plus the uh, stock variation when, when it's available. Uh, this computation, like for, for uh, problems of data availability, uh, the methodology excludes the depreciation of assets. Uh, taxes paid by, by households or farmers, and also the employment-related obligations, such as, for example, I don't know, like pension paid to, to employees or, or, or these kind of things. So um, the revenues shouldn't include only the quantity sold, so the quantity that is produced and then sold on the market, but also should include the quantity that is consumed by the farmer and the quantity that is stored. For a precise, let's say, review of what should be included, we, we have another uh, slide. And then also the cost, uh, like the cost should include uh, everything that is used to help, uh, let's say, run the, the, the production process. So uh, normally it comprises all the types of ex expenditure that uh, uh, the, the, the farming core in while, uh, while producing. So again, uh, in this presentation, I put a recap on the main components of revenues and the main components of cost. I think Naman has already like presented these slides and also the next on, on other sources of income. Uh, so we, we don't need to see them in detail. What you will, uh, will notice and, and that may look weird is that you have some components that are both in the revenue side and in the, the cost side. This is because some, uh, like, for example, let's find, let's find uh, uh, an example. Um, okay, so the crop use for paying rent. Why it's uh, among the revenues? Because if I don't use, for example, the, the, my production to pay for the rent, I would need to use my, my personal, let's say, income. But then, so I, 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 this is part of the revenues, but this is also a cost because uh, it's uh, like I need to rent uh, the land in order to produce crops. So in the end, this, uh, these components are somehow like they, they, they are eliminated from the final income competition because they are counted both as a revenue and, 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 and as a cost. So you can decide whether to put them in the equation or just uh, uh, remove them from, from both sides. And this, is, uh, this applies also for livestock income and uh, fishery and forestry income. Uh, so, which are the main data sources to compute this indicator? I think this should also uh, address some of uh, the questions we received on, on the exercise from yesterday. Um, 
of course, like each country uh, should use data that, that are available. In some countries, for example, we may have a well-developed agricultural survey that include information also for it, not only on, uh, on crop and lives of production, but also on the amount of labor, the, the labor input use, the, the cost of production, the all, the all the data that are needed to, uh, to compute the indicator. So in this case, the, the, the unit of, of the analysis, so the unit to which the indicators would be referred, would be farms that can be both in the agriculture, eh, sorry, in the household and non-household sector. Okay, and an example of uh, of good agricultural survey that could allow to compute this indicator is the Agri Survey, um, our service design under the Agri Survey project. The FAO. I will give more detail uh, on this. Uh, Jacob has also talked about this and also Naman. Uh, and, and perhaps you have also uh, already engaged with, uh, with the FAO team in charge of this, uh, of this project. Then uh, when instead uh, an household survey used, as in the case of Bangladesh, I think, because, um, for example, you see this Rural Liability Information System project is a project within the FAO that try to use existing data to compute some of these uh, SDG indicators. And, uh, and within this project, they have used the data of the of your uh, household income and expenditure survey to, to compute uh, SDG indicator 232. Uh, so perhaps we, we could see also how this data have been used and, and, and if this survey could be, let's say, complemented to compute also SDG indicator 231. Uh, so in some cases, uh, a good data source could be an household survey integrated with a module on agricultural activities of households. In these cases, the statistical unit would not be the farm anymore, like in the end it would be the far, but the, the initial uh, statistical units would be uh, the household. And then among these households, all the households with agricultural activities would be considered. Of course, the agricultural census could also be a good source only if uh, like all the needed variables are, are included in the census. And in some cases, also administrative data sources um, could be used in integration with other data sources. Although this, let's say, is not the preferred source as it's, it is very rare that administrative uh, records uh, will contain all the information that we need for the computation of such indicators. And uh, here, my colleagues can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it would be like more likely to have this kind of data for um, commercial farms than, than for household, let's say, or, uh, than holdings in the, the in the household sector, like administrative data for, for this type of holding. Um, so these are the four main possible data sources. Um, uh, as a rule of thumb, so what we were saying in the previous day, and, and this is perhaps the problem that we could have in Bangladesh. So all the information required for the, the computation of these two indicators and the, uh, the identification of small order should come from a single data source uh, to, yeah, to avoid confusion between production units and, and especially like to be able to, to trace back all the variables to a specific household uh, because we are not looking at uh, average measure at, uh, at country level, but at household or farm level. So it's important to have all the variables referred to the same statistic unit. Of course, there are, and I will briefly talk about this, there are statistical methods uh, that allow you to integrate data from different data sources. But the fact is that the, the integration of data from different sources should be ideally planned at the design stage of, of, of this survey. So like normally when you want to use multiple surveys for the computation of a specific indicator, this, this should be planned when the sampling design of this service is, uh, is, is planned. Uh, when, uh, so, so here a solution could be that when all the data required to, to compute in the indicators don't come from a single survey, then uh, we can redesign a, a survey that collects the required information. 
So let's see what could be could be a solution here, because the, the idea is, is not that of having a completely new survey, but adapt existing survey to uh, to collect uh, the, the required information. And that's what the agri-survey project normally does. Um, so by, by the realization that in many countries, agricultural surveys are seldom conducted in a systematic way, but also by the realization that this survey often do not collect all the data that are needed for policy making. Uh, the agri-survey, the default developed uh, the so-called agri-survey model that I will uh, briefly describe now. And, and, and normally when this model is implemented, the, the approach used is not to, let's say, uh, design a completely new survey, but is to go in a country, see what data are available and what surveys are conducted and see how these surveys could be improved using the, uh, the agri-survey model. And the, the idea is that of uh, basically bridging the data gap, uh, the, the, sorry, the 10 year gap that normally exists between one census and the other to have more regular production of, uh, uh, of agricultural statistics. Uh, the the agri-survey uh, is structured um, around a core model. So there, there's a core agricultural production model that should be implemented every year. And this core model is then integrated with some what we call rotational models. So some models that are not administered every year, but on a rotational basis. And these models cover different, uh, uh, let's say, domains. There uh, there's a labor model uh, uh, and economic models that collect, for example, information on cost of production. There is a model, model on uh, like the, the equipment, uh, so the machinery is available for the farm and so on. So on a rotational basis, a series of uh, information are collected and, and this, uh, this survey uh, is designed to collect information on indicator 231, 232, and also 501, which is another indicator under a FAO custodianship. So this could be, uh, let's say, um, could be considered to improve, let's say, already existing data collection system. So uh, Norman yesterday mentioned also the 50 by 2030 initiative. Let's say that this is a sort of continuation and expansion of the agri-survey project. The 50 by 2030 initiative, uh, let's say, that upscale the, the efforts of, of the agri-survey by bringing together two uh, two different projects, the Agri-Survey uh, project and the LSMS uh, ISA uh, initiative of the World Bank, the, where LSMS uh, ISA stands for a Living Standard Measurement Survey Integrated uh, Survey on Agriculture. And the objective of this initiative is to have by 2030 uh, the one of the like the two integrated survey implemented uh, in fifty uh, in fifty countries that are not currently like collecting all the agricultural information that are needed for policy making. So this could be um, let's say an initiative that that, that could be considered. Uh, and, and if you are, let's say, interested to get in touch with the, the, the team that is, uh, the, that is working on this initiative, you can express, let's say, your request of technical assistance to, to the FAO. Uh, so uh, before entering into the section on data disaggregation, I would like to see if the, there are any questions on, on, on what I've discussed so far, and also if my colleagues want to, to add something on this first part of the presentation. There is one uh, raise, hand raised, Mr. Kamul Islam, if you allow him. Yeah, uh, someone wants to ask a question. Yeah, Mr. Kamul, go ahead and. Uh, yeah, Kamul, uh, I'll give you the first. Yeah. You have to unmute, Mr. Kamul. Ah, yeah. I raised the hand for the uh, panelist permission, not for a question. Uh, okay. oh, I, no. I had seen that before, yeah. Okay, so it seems there is no, no burning question. Anyway, we'll have a time or two. As okay. Just at the end. You can continue either. Okay, so... Um... 
let's say I, I wanted to take the occasion of this uh, this training to to discuss uh, another topic that is, that is very relevant in the context of the SDG indicators, which is data disaggregation. So, uh, with the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, uh, member state, uh, states have, uh, let's say, embraced the, pri the principle of leaving no one behind. So, like, uh, let's say, leave all the, 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 the sphere and, uh, of, of society. And in order to, um, to reach everyone and like to, to make pro uh, monitor progress for everyone, more disaggregated data than currently available are needed. So, let's say that national National aggregates uh, uh, are not enough, but SDG indicators should be disaggregated by uh, relevant uh, dimension. And this is, let's say, um, stated and represented by an overarching principle of data disaggregation that is at the core of the SDG monitoring framework that states that SDG indicators should be disaggregated. Uh, were relevant by income, sex, age, race, ethnicity, migratory status, disability, and geographic location, or other characteristics that are relevant for a specific uh, indicator. And, and why, uh, why this? Because the data could uh, actually speak for those that are left behind. And uh, uh, one thing that uh, emerged with, uh, with the 2030 monitoring agenda is that very often the big picture doesn't provide a full picture. For example, you could have uh, a figure at the national le uh, level that hides disparities and inequalities at the subnational level or for specific uh, subgroup of the population. So uh, these aggregated data are needed like to understand who uh, in a specific context vulnerable population are that could be like people population in a specific area or a specific ethnicity. So to understand uh, who these people are, where they are and how many they are. In addition with the SDG monitoring framework, uh, uh, let's say the, the importance of uh, um, formulating policies that are uh, data uh, driven uh, 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 took a greater significance. The, the real problem is that very often those that are left behind, so populations that are more vulnerable, let's consider, for example, I don't know, the migrants or indigenous people are often those for which we have less information. So very often we have this data, um, we have a, a vicious uh, circle that uh, policies are not formulated on specific target population because data are not available, uh, but also like the demand of data uh, arise when some policy needs to be formulated. So in the end, the, the, there's always like the lack of data on population for which we would need to develop uh, policies. Of course, the more uh, disaggregated statistics uh, we have to produce, the more are the challenges that national statistic, uh, statistical systems have to face, both in terms of cost of data collection and analysis, but also, let's say, quality concerns, confidentiality, and sensitivity. And the, the, the challenge here is that uh, we, we don't only have to produce disaggregated data, but we have to produce quality disaggregated data. So there's the need to, on one side, develop new um, data collection tool if the information are not available. But on the other side, as we cannot, let's say, uh, always start new surveys and always like collect additional data, we have to use uh, methods that allow to improve the use of already existing data. <coughs> Sorry. And also, like when when you provide these aggregated data, especially at this subnational level, you have to ensure comparability over time and also within countries. So, uh, recognizing all the challenges. Uh, um, was by uh, data disaggregation to national statistical system, the EIG SDG, which is the interagency and Ex expert group on SDG indicators has created a working group on data disaggregation. This has the objective of uh, strengthening the national capacities uh, and developing the necessary statistical standards and tools to produce disaggregated data. So this working group is composed by many custodian agencies, including the FU and, and most member countries. <coughs> Sorry. So this, uh, the, the work of the, the working group was created, I think, around 2016. And this led to develop, the development of many tools. The, one of the most important 
uh, and the simplest one is this minimum disaggregation set and the compilation of categories and dimensions of that aggregation. Basically, for each SDG indicators, including also 231 and 232, the EIG SDG and the working group identified the minimum required dimension for disaggregation, so the mandatory dimension for disaggregation, and also the future dimension. So those that are not mandatory, meaning that they are not in the name of indicator or explicitly like mentioned by the target, but they would be useful like for policy making them, they could also be computed uh, for specific in these indicators. Of course, uh, like uh, in order to disaggregate data, we also need, uh, let's say, standards and classification and also methodological tool. So there were other resources that were developed, for example, a comprehensive summary of disaggregation standards and classification for SDG indicators, a compilation of policy priority by disaggregation dimension, and a compilation of, of methods and tools for data disaggregation. All these resources can be accessed uh, by the link that is uh, presented in this slide, and that will be circulated after the presentation. So, okay, here is just to explain what this compilation of categories and dimension is, I, I have already said. So the, the most important one is this. So the minimum set of disaggregation that is, is the disaggregation dimension that are mandatory for an indicator so that sooner or later they uh, should will be produced. And this dimension uh, are those that are specifically mentioned in the title of the indicator or in the, or in the target. The other, let's say, okay, other current disaggregation are those additional uh, disaggregation besides the mandatory one that are currently included in the database. And then we have future additional disaggregation that are disaggregation dimension and category that are mentioned in the metadata for future, let's say, disaggregation that are not mandatory. Besides that, uh, the, the EIG SDG uh, has also created, a, a, like within the working group on data disaggregation, a task force on small area estimation. So small area estimation techniques are methods that allow to combine multiple data sources to, uh, let's say, increase the quality of disaggregated estimates for very small domains, such as for, I don't know, um, I can bring the example of Italy. Uh, Italy is divided in, in region provinces and then within each province you have, you have municipalities. So very often with a sample survey, you would be able to perhaps compute representative service, uh, sorry, estimates at regional level. If you want to go below this disaggregation, you may need like uh, model-based techniques such as model estimation techniques to produce uh, accurate estimates also, for example, at, uh, at, municipality, at municipality level. And these approaches basically are based on the integrated use of, uh, of multiple data sources, such as, for example, a survey that is back up from a census, which has, a, let's say, a bigger coverage uh, of the population and allows, let's say, producing more accurate uh, estimates. Okay, so after this introduction, let's see which uh, are the disaggregation dimensions required for, uh, for our indicators, so 231 and 232. So the mandatory dimension are the sex uh, of the holding or household ads. So when, like, when you will produce uh, indicator 231 and 232, you will have to compute them for the total, let's say, population, but also disaggregated by the, the sex of the head of the holding, let's say. And this is already done, like uh, this disaggregation dimension is already included in the, in, uh, in the global indicator database. Then you have the type of enterprise. If it's, uh, so you, you, the indicator should be computed by all farms, but also by type of sector. This, in, this dimension is not currently included and you are not requested for the moment to, to compute the indicator at this disaggregation level. Mainly, like I would say, the main reason is the data availability issue. So the indicator for the moment should not be computed by this dimension. Then of course, the size, the size of the farm. So the indicator should be computed both for small scale and non-small uh, small scale uh, 
uh, food producer. And then the most difficult one, in my opinion, the indigenous status. Uh, so for um, the indicator in theory should be computed by total population, then indigenous and non-indigenous. Of course, this information is often not uh, uh, not included in, uh, in service. So that this may be, may be challenging, let's say, to uh, even by 2030 to, to produce indicators still aggregated by, the, by this, uh, this dimension. And then future disaggregation are the age of the holding head. Of course, uh, some age class, uh, classes should be defined and then the geographic location. So the, the simplest one, is let's say a geographic location is aggregated by urban rural. And if possible, I would uh, suggest and ask you to, to produce the indicator also by this disaggregation dimension. So by the, <coughs> where the, the holding is located. And this is because um, like um, we are planning to, to add this dimension to the, to the global SDG database, but also because in the, in the context of the new uh, FAO strategic agreement, uh, data disaggregated uh, by urban and rural location would be particularly relevant as, as data accelerator. So this would be another suggested dimension for, for data disaggregation. But by geographic location could be also at the subnational level. So I was saying by, for example, by region, by uh, province or municipality, or uh, depending on the, let's say, the administrative uh, divisions uh, of, of Bangladesh. So, um, okay, this I have already said that. So, currently, the indicator should be disaggregated by sex of the household head and the size of it in the enterprise. I would, uh, let's say, suggest to add uh, also the urban rural uh, disaggregation uh, among, uh, among these. Um, the, the most challenging one in terms of statistical methods to be to be adopted is the disaggregation at the subnational level. So, like below, let's say the, the, the biggest uh, divisions, and and let's see why uh, this. So, both indicator two three one and two three two, as we as we saw, are uh, most often based on sample survey data. So, which are the, the main challenges? Uh, so, there are basically two big challenges when using uh, sample survey data to achieve, let's say, granular disaggregation at subnational level. Uh, on one side, the, the sampling size, let's say, is often not large enough to guarantee reliable estimates for, uh, for very small domains. And on the other hand, you may have, let's say, small areas. So, small geographic uh, domains that have no uh, uh, no sampling units. So you, you may not have sampling units for all the possible disaggregation domains. So these are the two, uh, let's say, main challenges when, when you work with survey data. So uh, to, to solve that, not only for these two indicators, but for all the indicators based on, uh, on survey data, OCS, so the Office of the Chief Statistician of FAO, has uh, produced guidelines on, uh, on data disaggregation for those SDG indicators that are based on survey, survey data. So these guidelines offer both methodological but also practical tools in, in the form of uh, like a software packages to produce direct and indirect disaggregated estimates of the SDG indicators. I will uh, tell more uh, about what is direct and what is uh, indirect uh, estimates. And then the, the publication also provides the tools to assess the, the, the accuracy of uh, of these estimates and present strategies to improve uh, uh, the accuracy of the, of the estimate. The guidelines can be accessed from, from the link uh, in these slides. So, uh, and this publication is particularly relevant because approximately the 30% of the, the OD and the SDG indicators included in the global SDG, like in the SDG monitoring framework are based on survey data. And only for what concerns the FAO, seven out of uh, the 21 indicator under its custodianship can be computed only or also with, uh, with survey data. And the issue addressed by the publication are, are those that I've, uh, I've mentioned. So that when you use sampling, uh, sample survey data, 
there are limitations to produce reliable disaggregated estimates. And the techniques that could address this limitation are often not mainstream in, uh, in national statistical offices. So I, I try to, um, to provide, let's say, the contents of the guideline with, with this idea. So we saw which are the two main limitations. Uh, the sample size is not large enough to guarantee uh, reliable estimates for all these dis uh, disaggregation domains. And you may also have not sample, uh, sample domains. So these two issues can be addressed at two stages. At the design stage, by adopting sampling design that guarantee, uh, let's say, uh, a sampling size that is large enough in each, uh, uh, let's say, disaggregation domains. Of course, the more you uh, enlarge the sampling size, the more the, the, the cost of your survey will increase, and this may become not sustainable for uh, any disaggregation domain. On the other hand, you could address this, uh, these issues at the analysis stage by producing indirect estimates, so using methods such as, for example, small area estimation method that cope with the little information available for these so-called small areas by borrowing strength from external data sources. And, and these methods, uh, now, like these are ideas that came to my mind while, while listening to, to issues that you raised uh, during this first day. But this method could also somehow uh, be used to uh, not smaller estimation methods, but other data integration methods could be used to, to solve the issue that, uh, that you have to, like when, when, let's say, the variables needed for the computation of indicators are corrected, uh, collected through, through different data sources. So this is something that we also may discuss uh, later when, when we see your data. Uh, so um, let's see um, here. I, I will go up briefly because this is, let's say, not really the core of this uh, this training. But so as I said, there are two approaches: uh, addressing data disaggregation at the design stage and at the analysis stage. So at the at the at the design stage. Um, like basically you have to design a, a sampling uh, strategy that will ensure the presence of a, a sufficient number of sampling units in each disaggregation domain. And this, this number of sampling units will allow you to compute so-called direct estimates, so estimates based on the sample observation. And, and um, let's say this uh, approach may be st straightforward when the number of units belonging to a given subpopulation can be determined from the sampling frame. In this case, we only have to, uh, let's say, choose the degree of oversampling to apply. Of course, this will come for a, a, for a with a cost. It's more complex when, uh, let's say you have to produce um, disaggregated estimates for members of rare subpopulation, like, for example, I don't know, the, the migrants, the homeless, this, this type of population. And, and let's say that the membership of uh, this, rare sub, uh, to this rare subpopulation is not known in advance from the available sampling frame. So from the sampling frame you have, for example, you are not able to see who is uh, an homeless or who is uh, a migrant. In these cases, there are many, let's say, sampling approach that could be used, like, for example, I, I just mentioned some, the large-scale screening, this disproportionate stratified sampling, two-stage sampling, or, or like by adopting multiple frames. Uh, okay, I will skip this. In any case, this slide lists uh, some of the, let's say, sampling approaches that could be used uh, in a, when, when disaggregated estimates need to be produced. Uh, the, the guideline also uh, provides some tools to. Aida, sorry, yes, yes, we are uh, we are very late. You like you are over ten minutes already. So I spoke more than forty five minutes. Unfortunately, yes. Okay, I, I think it's also because we started late because I don't. Okay, so thank you, Faridun. Um. Let me see what I can skip. Okay, so uh, at the sampling design stage, uh, we, we saw, uh, let's say, data disaggregation at the design stage. For the uh, analysis stage, I was, as I was saying, um, data disaggregation can be addressed adop adopting indirect estimation approaches. The guidelines develop uh, some of them. 
which may be useful, I will not then enter into the detail, but they may be useful to achieve data disaggregation at a very de detailed subnational level. So uh, let's say that uh, OCS, if you are interested, has the capacity to provide uh, technical assistance on, on, on these approaches, not only for SDG indicator 231 uh, and 232, but also, for example, for five, uh, 5A1. So with this, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I exceeded the, the time and I can close the, the presentation. The important is that, I mean, to, to recap, uh, the, the only thing that you have to, to get from this presentation for now is that the SDG indicator 231 and 232 should be computed by sex of uh, the head of the household by, of course, size of the farm, so small-scale food producer and non-small-scale food producer by uh, rural uh, urban location. And in case you need support uh, from the FAO to implement uh, data disaggregation at very detailed so national level, we could uh, support you in the, uh, in the application of indirect estimation techniques, uh, such as smaller estimation techniques. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aida, for this very detailed presentation. And the presentation has had basically two parts. One was dealing with the data sources for computing this, uh, and these two indicators. And the second part was dealing with the data disaggregation, which is a whole domain with all the challenges that uh, Aida uh, detailed, particularly the techniques and the, 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 the the statistical method that can be used to overcome the challenges. So maybe we take a few questions before we go to the next presentation. Uh, if there is anybody who wants to intervene and to ask questions to Aida on her presentation, please raise your hand. I see some hands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, who wants to start, uh, Mr. Alaudin? May I start? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I have a few questions to Aida. Uh, in her presentation, uh, he mentioned the under every survey, the, the in a, uh, this is a 10 year uh, rounding survey. Every year, uh, collect data on production. Is it a final survey or uh, individual sample every year? Okay. My question is clear or not? Yes. 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 Yeah. So, shall we take the other question or either you want to answer okay. this first? Okay. And uh, second one is uh, your, um, uh, your data disaggregation. Um, you have mentioned uh, one is type of enterprise, according to type of enterprise, but a household which has a, a crop production, maybe they have some fisheries uh, cultivation or may have, they have some uh, forestry. In which criteria you um, disaggregate that household? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, Naman, can I take these first two questions and then we'll yeah, answer? If Mr. Aladdin has finished his question, you can answer to him. Is that the, the two questions? Okay. Have? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so please go ahead, Aida. Okay, so um, for the first one, uh, the, so the Agri survey model is a, a model that has been designed, but it's not a, a fixed model. So every time uh, it's implemented in a country, this is tailored to the specific country. And this applies also to the sampling design. So the sampling design is not a uh, strict, let's say, you know, uh, always the same one, but it's uh, it's designed with the country, uh, considering its specificities, and also like taking it to, into account what is already available in the country. Very often, like uh, countries already have an agricultural uh, survey, so the approach is to start from that existing agricultural survey. And, uh, and adapt it and, and possibly improve it. So uh, there's no real, uh, at least uh, in my opinion, there's not real answer for your question because it really depends on, uh, on the country and the specific survey. 
Is it correct, Noma? I think. Uh, yeah, I think the I guess the idea is like the the census. You know, you have this core module and uh, complementary module. It's the same philosophy for the agris. So you have a kind of core module in agris, which is repeated every year, and then from uh, depending on the module, you add uh, a module on labor, a module on this and on that. So, uh, but you keep the, the core module. And mm -hmm. the sampling is done at, for uh, once, yes. Yeah, but I, okay. So in, in the Agris, we can also circulate that. There's an Agris handbook, uh, so the, where they present the methodology. So there is a sampling design that is suggested for the Agris survey, but then I think every time the, the, the sampling design is tailored to the specific, uh, country and uh, uh... I think the philosophy is that but if you go <laughs> to a specific country you need to look at the situation there and mm -hmm. yeah yeah and for is the that... second uh... yeah yes for the second question on, on data disaggregation, you, you are perfectly right. Indeed, uh, that uh, dimension is still not uh, produced. Let's say that the indicator is not disaggregated by type of enterprise yet. And there should be still some discussion with the, the focal point of this indicator within the field to decide uh, how to go with respect to that. I think that's a good question <laughs> and it needs to be yeah. more discussed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Is it uh, oh, all I, for... I, I, I have a suggestion, you know, uh, during the uh, MS project, you know, you, you, have, uh, you know about the MS project, you know, it was mm -hmm. a big project by FAO, yes. funded by Bill and Melinda yeah. So Bangladesh was one of the country and it was for two years in Bangladesh. I was the lead national consultant, but within that one, what I did, you know, I proposed one integrated sampling frame. So there will be a master sample. Then within that one, uh, they will go for one area survey. Then within the, that one, they have another small uh, sample size mm -hmm. on the same frame for the you know, uh, uh, you know yield and later on uh, for uh, uh, you know forecasting or something like that or a damage survey something like that. So if from the agriculture sensor that Bangladesh has directed recently, they can prepare one big you know master sample and from that one gradually they can add one more yeah. as Agri is doing. So it will you know uh, minimize the cost and you can link the households and whatever units who are you know planning mm -hmm. in future. So as you have indicated, there are seven uh, indicators out of twenty one that have to discuss too. Mm -hmm. So if you can you know plan something one integrated survey design, more or less other countries may follow from their agriculture census. So mm -hmm. that will be I think that will minimize the cost actually in the long run. And again, you can relate to the ind indicators in between. So. Mm -hmm. I think one, and at the same time, two point three point one. You can also internally uh, validate or uh, find the relationship. What is going on there? So this is my mm -hmm. proposal. Uh, and, and at the headquarter level, you can discuss this point. Agris is there, but Agris is module by module. But sampling frame that uh, that may be designed uh, in that way. But regarding the disaggregation, uh, you rightly said that a small area estimation is a uh, good proposal. Otherwise, sample size would be very bigger. Uh, to mm -hmm. you know. To represent all the you know the lower level designation, so uh, I think smaller estimation is the one and widely, and you know Bangladesh also use a, a smaller estimation for highest the poverty mapping mm. everything. So ah oh, okay. On the level they use the World Bank method, LL, okay. LL probably LLB method probably, and also so, I personally you know supervise two PhD students, two PhD students that that use the latest multi level you know. M quantile method of smaller estimation. So, uh, if you just if we can you know increase the capacity of BBS. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so you know, perhaps uh, uh, yeah, let's. Time, we, we can seek you know, help. Mm -hmm. that, that is fine. You know, smaller estimation should be actually uh, promoted in here. I think. Otherwise, you know, cost will be very much you know, higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. So perhaps we should have uh, another discussion like yeah. uh, on that and see if we can, I don't know, plan a training or... Yeah, you need uh, to organize a specific training on the... the yes. <laughs> because these small area estimation techniques are uh, straightforward, but in application, 
application in concrete application is uh, tricky. Eh? You need a yes. uh, specialist in sampling. Tools. Again, using mm -hmm. polished machine in agriculture is also uh, still a uh, uh, You know, Rao is uh, the guru. Of it, and uh, we have this uh, all the ISI meetings, and there are a lot of discussion in it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, like, uh, it's very useful to know that there are some capacity there already, like, that they are using it for poverty okay. mapping. So I think uh, we, yeah, we can continue this discussion. Yeah, uh, let, let us take another question because we are a little bit behind the schedule and then we move to the next presentation. Is there any other question? If not, I don't know, Farid, how? Uh, I yeah, one question. Question. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, for uh, your presentation to um, uh, Aida. Just, uh, uh, we, uh, we gather knowledge, our uh, uh, some indicator, uh, SDD indicator 2.4.1, 2.1.2, and 2.15A1, and last 2.3.1, 2.3.2. Can you use the same sample frame uh, for uh, indicator 2.31 and 2.32 for the survey? Your, Sorry. Your question is uh, if we can use the same sample, is that the question? Same sample, yes. Say, can you use same sam uh, sample uh, for, for 2.3.1, 2.2, uh, is related to 2.4.1 and 5A1? We can use the same sample frame. Hello. So, uh, so you mentioned 231, 232, 5A1 and 212. 2.4.1 i would say and... yes i would say so yes i think uh, because the reference population is the same so 231 and 232 are uh, refers to either farms or agricultural households right mm -hmm. then uh, 5a1 refers to agricultural population so okay. it's it's the same um then 241 i think mm -hmm. also Yes, I think he's also referred to to agricultural population. I don't know if if Arbab is still with us, uh, but yes, I would say that uh, the same sampling frame can be used. Jacob. Uh, yeah, I, I think you answered the, the question rightly. I mean, <laughs> this as long as this all are related to agriculture, I, I, yes. mean, I think we need to promote to integrate things. You know, running mm -hmm. one survey design for yes. each of the indicators, it it's is not really uh... recommended. It is mm -hmm. costly and it's not recommended. And then, as, as you said, you know, the unit of uh, you know the data collection unit is agriculture household, agriculture holdings for all of the the indicators that you mentioned. Therefore, having one sampling approach for this thing should resolve the whole hassle. Mm -hmm. We recommend to do to do so. Okay. okay. I think if there is no more question, we should uh, move to the next presentation. But I'm looking at the time, Faridun. Uh, how far are we from the break? Or shall we take some time out of the break so that we have at least this presentation before the break? Hello, Faridun. Sorry, I was muted. We have 10 minutes to the break, 15 minutes to the break. Like, let's, do, let's do the yeah. first presentation then. Yeah, okay. let's do this. Let's go for the presentation. Okay, okay. Mr. Mohammad Saddam Hussein Khan is uh, uh, already in the panelist. So you can uh, share your screen and share your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll do it accordingly. Thank you. Okay. Are you using two devices because the echo is coming? At least mute one. After the break, I will share the presentation. Uh, can you share your screen? Baker, for the So Saddam. So can no, no, I no, can Saddam. I start the presentation now or after the break? Yeah, yes, now, now. Yes, yes, now, now. Now, now, yeah. So can I start my presentation now or after the break? Yes, you start your presentation now, please. <clears throat> we'll reduce a little bit the time for the break.
Yeah, we can see the presentation. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Saddam from Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, welcoming you all in my presentation. I am presenting on behalf of Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. I am working as a deputy director in agriculture wing under the Minister of Planning. And I have segregated my presentation in eight parts. First one is introductory part. And then I will explain regarding the survey and census that is usually conducted in BBS. I'll explain some of the activities. Uh, those are related to the regular activities in agriculture wing. And I will also explain the recent agriculture census 2019. And I will also explain the main objectives of agriculture census 2019. And the questionnaire which we use for collecting data on agriculture census, I will show that questionnaire and I'll explain, explain something on it. And then I also explain something related to the agriculture sample census, which is recently conducted in 2020. Then we're getting the sample frame that was used in agriculture sample census, also domain sample size. And especially I will go on focus. I will go on focus for SDG indicator in agriculture census and the relevant survey that we are proposing and then expectation from the FA team. Basically, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics is a national statistical organization in our country. And we have a Statistics Act, which is called Statistics Act 2013. And according to the Statistics Act, the BBS is really responsible for collecting data, generating data, and generating the official statistics in Bangladesh. And the main function of Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics to collect, compile, analyze, and disseminate data for generating the official statistics, which represent the social, economic, demographic, environmental, cultural, sectoral data. Mm -hmm. And the, some of the surveys which BBS conduct, first of all, the household income and expenditure survey, which is called HIES. And then BBS conduct multiple indicator cluster survey, which is called MICS. And then monitoring the situation of vital statistics of Bangladesh, which is called MSVSB. And then sample census after the census, then we usually do the sample census and we, uh, for the agriculture census, we conducted the sample census and then national child labor survey and labor food survey, climate change and disaster related survey we usually do. And then we also do the literacy assessment survey, health and demography survey and national hygiene survey. And also we conduct the food and security and a nutrition surveillance survey. And then the main three census BBS usually conduct population and housing census. Our upcoming population and housing census will conduct upcoming October 2021. And agriculture census we uh, conducted in 2018. Uh, the data collection was completed in 2019. And then we uh, are also going to conduct in economic census in 2023. And last economic census was conducted in 2013. So these three main census BBS conduct. And the uh, activities is regularly done by uh, the agriculture wing in BBS, all about the eight activities. First of all, the cluster survey it is done in quarterly base. And then cross estimation survey, uh, it is done in seasonal base. And then crop forecast survey, two times season based only for the major crops. We usually do the crop forecast survey. And we usually do the crop cutting. It is seasonally when the you know, the rice, you know, rice, maize, these are the crops is in the yield. Estimating the yield, we usually do the crop cutting survey. And then we also do the annually land use survey. Also the irrigation survey, this is also annually. And labor waste survey, this is conducted in monthly. In every month, we usually do the labor waste survey. 
and also the cross damage survey. After the natural calamity, we usually do the crop damage survey. These eight regular surveys usually conduct by the agriculture wing of BBS. And then I will explain regarding the agriculture census in 2019, which we conducted. Then agriculture census held in 2019, it was in modular approach. At the first stages, we collected all the general information through a short questionnaire on crops, fisheries, and related to the livestock as well. At the second stages, in the sample census, we information collected through a long questionnaire. It is all about the eight modules who collected the information through the sample census. I will later on show you the whole questionnaire of the sample census. And then the which are the relevant objective we focused for conducting the agriculture census 2019. First of all, the land utilization tenancy in terms of leasing, cropping pattern, irrigation status, livestock, population, and relevant characteristics, and area under fishing. These are the main, you know, first objective of agriculture census. And also we uh, try to collect the data related to the household, which we'll use for uh, the frame further on for collecting data on the different surveys. Also, we uh, did uh, the relevant we also did the informations related to the agricultural census that will, will enable to observe the structural changes in the agriculture. Nowadays, the agriculture activities are changes due to the, you know, rapid industrializations and due to the, uh, you know, varieties of crops. So after collecting the agricultural census data, we may enable to observe the structural changes that occurred in the agriculture. So these three in the main objectives of agriculture census 2019. And then the short questionnaire. And when we conducted the agriculture census in 2019, we used the short questionnaire. It's around 25 key indicators we collected through the question. Mm -hmm. And I can, we can show the question as well here. See, I'm just, it's, little, it's a little bit small as I scan from my book. See, these are the question is all about 25, you know, key indicators. We collected data from uh, the short questionnaire in, most probably it is not showing on the screen. Oh, we have it. Oh, why, why we, we don't see it? We see have it. you uh, open another link? Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, show from the hyperlink, you know? Oh, that's why it is not coming. Probably you have to, no, come out first and then show it again. You can show it later on after you know, finishing your slides. I think we all received the... the okay, the, thank you. I already, I already sent to you through the email uh, along with the presentation. Then short yes. questionnaire, we covered 25 key indicators from the short questionnaire. And then we also conduct the sample census in 2020. It is all about, you know, eight modules. Uh, sorry, um, we, we cannot see the, the hyperlink that you opened because when you share the screen, you selected only the presentation. So we, we can only see the PowerPoint. But if you want to share another file with us, you can stop sharing your screen and sharing again, selecting the page that you want to show. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I will show you later on the agriculture okay. census questionnaire and the sampling the frame. Yeah. The sampling frame which we used in conducted the sample census. Uh, our total enumeration area was 163,672. The crops enumeration area is 97,820. The livestock enumeration area was 42,628. The fisheries enumeration area was 15,534. And non-farm enumeration area was 7,690. The categories are separated in majority based from the census enumeration area. These are the sampling frame we used in our sample census. And the domain and the sample size, the three main domains we focused, which was crops, fisheries, and livestock. And for each districts, it was, you know, all about the 64 districts. We, you know, covered three domains along with our, you know, total PSU is 9,875 and total household was 148,000. And the seven module, as I, 
you know, inform you before the seven model we used in our sample sensor questionnaire in 2020, the module one is related to the household members, landowners, and land utilization types. Module two, household agriculture, is related to the crops information. Module three, that was household based fisheries information. Module four, household livestock, the cattle information. Module five, household poultry information. Module six, engaged manpower of household in agriculture sector. And finally, the module seven was the food security related experiences. Questionary, we included there and collected data accordingly. And uh, it comes through the agriculture census linked to the SDG indicator, the five major indicator. We focused on our sample census. It is indicator 1.4.2, it is indicator 2.3.1, it is indicator 2.3.2, it is indicator 5.8.1, and it is indicator 2.1.2. These five indicator, uh, five SDGs indicator focused on our agriculture census and the proposed project that relate for achieving those SDGs indicators. And first of all, the food security statistics, survey on SDGs indicator 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, we are proposing to conduct the latest survey for getting information through the SDGs indicator 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, live history on the fishery survey, and preparation of food balance sheet and automation of data collection, compilation, and the reporting as well. And then data sources with this indicator 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 as the main data sources are our agriculture sample census where we related for the operating land which covered the temporary crops area, permanent crops land area, and current fellow land area available in our sample census. And the cost of production that covered on crops, fisheries, and livestock but the forest data was not available on our sample census. The labor hours and day related data are included in the sample census questionnaire. And our expectation from the FAO as we are you know, struggling for generating this indicator. So for conducting a survey that relate to this indicator, we are planning to conduct the survey which relate on our proposed project. So, but we need the assistance and the relevant support from FAO team and this is our you know, main expectations from you and your team as well. Uh, we need the technical assistance as well as the further support for conducting 2.3.1 uh, and 2.3.2 indicator related survey on the SDZ. This is all about our little presentation. And thank you very much. And now I will show you the questionnaire. Yes, hold on. Stop sharing. Okay. So, uh, so this question was used for collecting data on agriculture census in 2019. This is the short questionnaire. It is all about 25 key indicators we collected from uh, this questionnaire. This question was used Just in know, 2019. Uh, increase, the, increase the size, Saddam. Yes, I please. Think, you, know, you are in what format? You can increase the in, in, in this. Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, now we can read it. Okay. See, uh, this question was used in for conducting uh, the agriculture census 2019 in Bangladesh. See, uh, the first of all, the name of the head of the household, name of the father and mother, occupational code, and then the household is like the fisheries household, the mobile number, this innovation area, you know, the member of the household, like the male, female, the land of household. So, see. These are the land under the temporary crops, and then this 15 land under the permanent crops. You know, see. Do you have livestock numbers here in this core module? 
Yeah, yeah, in the, in the downs, in, in, I'm, I'm just showing you. See the question 12, the number of poultry. Okay. Number 13, the number of livestock, it was given on the question as well. Okay. See. In the production, do you have production as well? Production is in the complementary modules, I think. Yeah. The sample modules. So we collected data regarding the production from our sample census. I will show you all. Mm -hmm. okay. See, this is the number 16, the ownership of the agriculture machineries. This is number 16. Like the some of the agriculture machineries are used by the households. So we collected data the, regarding the ownership of those machineries, like the tractor or tiller. These are the machineries that are used in our country. Uh, okay, that's good. Okay, now I, if you allow that, I can show you the sample sets of questionnaire. Okay. Is it okay? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Also, send these two questionnaire to you know to the team, so that they can when they have time, they can go through you know with further you know detail. Uh, so this is the sample uh, census questionnaire. Mm -hmm. First, uh, this part is related to the innovation area details, area division district, the administrative part of our country, like small part, like the Union Ward, Moja, the village, the innovation area number, the RNMO, it reflects the rural municipal area and the other urban area, the PSO number, PSO category, we segregated the PSO number based on the categories, like the crops, fishery, and the livestock as well. And then household number as per the main census, then household number as per the sample census, you know? For targeting the house, we, gave the two numbers, household number as per the main census, there was a number in the main census in the house, on that household. And we try to uh, keep it the same matching and giving the keeping these two numbers in the sample censuses, the household number as per the sample census, we, we put two numbers in the sample census questionnaire. And then it comes to the household information, name of the household head, name of the mother, father, name of the respondent, the mobile number, NID, this is called like the, NID, national identification number of the respondent, relationship with the head of the household, then module one. The module one, it was all total the seven module, as I explained before. The module one, the amount of ownership, use and type of land, all members of the family. Two, 2.5. This is number one. Mm -hmm. This is 1.11.1, name of the family members and type of land ownership. And it's related to the 1.4.2 and 5.8.1. This is indicators. And this is the you know, question related to the relationship of the head of the household. So the production is uh, that is uh, module two. Yeah, this is module two. Information on the agriculture grain of household. Two point one number and ownership of the vehicle used for agriculture purpose. Okay, this I'm going to the two point five, which is relevant to us now. Two point five. The permanent and the temporary crop calculations. Two point five point one land of the temporary crops in last one year, and cost quantity and the value of production. This is related on today's discussion. The temporary name of the crops. 
you know, the different crops we can, and amount of the land, and this is related to the echo and the decimal, the measurement of the land, the cost, land preparation, is totally related to the production cost. If you consider like, the production cost, so it is relevant to the production cost. Then irrigation, fertilizer, weeding, hormone, and other vitamins, pesticides, cutting, lifting, and transportations. This led to the production call about the production cost, including the labor as well. Okay, do you have the same for the livestock? Yes. And then the total spent labor hours. Let's see over here, the total productions amount kg or number and the price in Taka and total by productions value. Okay, you have labor hours, okay. Yes, 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 labor hours. But considering the day, so we can convert the labor day from the labor hours as well. Good. And also the byproduct, we can calculate the bulk product, the relevant information we collected from the sample census. Good. Then this is all about the temporary crops. This is all about the crops. Mm -hmm. This is all about the crops. This is all over the crops you can see here. And this is the vegetable type, temporarily crops, temporarily crops, temporarily crops, temporarily crops. This is oil type, food type. Well, I think this is a very rich. Uh... This is related to the fiber, sugar, and the energy type crops like jute, sugar cane, tobacco, and then temporary crops like flower type, the different flowers. So the same is available for livestock, fishery, and forestry? Yes, I can show you. This is the land permanent crops. For the permanent crops, we, it's 2.5.2, the land of permanent crops in the last one year and relevant cost quantity and the value of productions. So see, this is the permanent crops, like the mango, berry, jackfruit, leeches, the guava, coconut, juby, and hog palm, olive, dates. These are the permanent crops, plum tree, custard, See, that this is the kind of energy type, the betel leaf, betel nut tea, wood and the forest type, it's the bamboo, libek, ventry, mahogany, teak, Mm. Okay. This is 2.6 sale and the extraction of the agriculture resources. The module three cultivated the fisheries information in household. This is module three. This is related to the fisheries information from that household. Is that aquaculture or is it? Uh, uh, the fishery, inland fishery? This is inland fisheries. Okay. Land, land fisheries. Land fishery, the land use and quantity under the fish farming. And 3.2 is the fish farming, it's the aquaculture base, land use and the quantity under the fish farming. Okay, so it's fish farming. Oh. The cultivation in the pond and creek and diggy.
land use and the quantity and the fish farming, 3.2. Mm -hmm. Cultivation in pond, 3.3.1. Collecting rain upon her from open water source and eating and selling, 3.3.2. Fisheries cultivation and collecting, 3.4.1 fisheries cultivation under the operated land, this is 3.4.1. Name of the fishes, and then quantity price, last one year production, sold, which is for use for family purpose, that is eating, profit and loss as well. 3.4.1, fisheries cultivation under operated land. Fisheries cultivation under operated land, 3.4.1. 3.4.2, has any member of your household caught fish in open water in one year? This is relevant to the open air fishing. And then Renu Puna, this is kind of aquaculture cultivation, the Renu. And 3.7, fish food related expenses. And 3.8, the fish care related expenses. Module four, the cattle related. Do you have any cattle and poultry or household run cattle and any poultry farm? This is our first question, this is 4.1 in this module. Then 4.2, use of land for cattle. And then cattle of household related, 4.3, kind of cows, you know, different type of cows, this is native cows. Yeah, yeah, gorse chips, all those, and then kind of goats, and then in the right side you can see the sheep, kind of sheep, you know. See, kind of goats, kind of sheep. Then for, for the pig, this is pig related, you know, pig related. And 4.4 purchase of sale of cattle, but that number and the prices and the different cattles, we collected that information from the different cattles. And this is all about the purchase and sale of cattle and their status related to the part and date as well and their price. And 4.5 information dairy productions in the household, kind of cattle, the different cattle and the number of current milking cattle daily produced milk in liter, and every liter average milk price from the different cattles, and 4.6 cattle feed, health, and other costs. This is food-related cost, and 4.6.2 is the health-related cost, and 4.7 price of last year's cattle by products, cow, buffalo, goat, sheep, and other domestic animal, and model five, poultry of household, are there any poultry, quail, pigeon, turkey, etc., are available in that household? And then 5.2 use of land under poultry farming, poultry number, poultry price, and poultry related information native cock, chicken, parent stock, layer, boiler, shonali, farmy, turkey, chuck, quailie. This is different type of poultry we usually you know, nursing available in our country. Uh, 5.4, poultry, egg production related status. The native chicken, the dark layer, these are the different, you know, varieties of poultry. So the egg production from those poultry, we collected the data from those. And then 5.5, poultry feed related cost for, you know, for the poultry farming, the relevant cost of food for feeding those poultry. We collected data for relevant cost on feeding and also the relevant cost of medicine and other shed related infrastructural cost over there. We collected data based on those shades and the medicine relevant costs. And then 5.7 price on last year ducks and chicken byproduct. Now this is the cost for the last year duck and the chicken byproduct. This is like the domestic cock and others, duck and others. Module six. Manpower. Module six for manpower generally engaged in agriculture work in household. Manpower usually engaged in agriculture 
require population type is the year segment five to nine years 10 to 14 years 15 to 17 years 18 to 24 years 25 years and above the manpower those were engaged in agriculture work male female we segregated the data male and female also and then some of those are involved in cropping, those are involved in fisheries, those are involved in livestock, and some of them, those are engaged in both and two or more. So we also collected those data. And 6.2, the number of laborers in agriculture work in the household is permanent, temporary, total. And then module seven, household food security. This is related to the SDG 2.1.2. We'll now ask some questions about your food taking. We will answer listening. The question 721, see, this is around seven, eight question all total, 7.1 to 7.8. It's related to the household food security and it is focusing on the SDG 2.1.2. See these questions. Okay. It's a very detailed. Questionnaire. So this is all about our sample census questionnaire. Thank you very much. Thanks for the patient hearing. And any question, you are most welcome. So our team is over here. We will try to supplement your question if you have. Thank you very much. I think Mr. Saddam for this very interesting and detailed presentation of the the surveys conducted by BBS focusing on the the census, which is really implemented, I can see, uh, using the FAO recommendations. We, we are really going by the book, in, uh, applying all the, the recommendations of FAO in this census. So uh, I think we are a little bit behind the time, but maybe we'll take some time from the, the break. I think this was a very interesting presentation. We need uh, to go into questions and see uh, Faridum, how, how, where are we with the time? So we can uh, go to break for 10 minutes. I don't know if it's possible. And we can uh, come back at uh, 4.05, or we can have 15 minutes and we can come back at 4.10. Uh, so we can have uh, some questions now and go to the break uh, after 10 minutes or not? We have one question, Mr. Taidul Islam, if you... Have I have already got my answer. I have already okay. got my answer Good. on this question. So, uh, the, the questionnaire is a very nice. I think all the data come from... <laughs> we can calculate at 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 from this uh, sample as a questionnaire. It is... Uh, uh, all the data, I think, all the data is available from this questionnaire. Exactly, exactly. I have all the, I have got this. Let's take, let's yeah. take a few minutes and uh, some little uh, question to Mr. Saddam. You know, Saddam, yeah. what yes, about please. the you know, re, re, use of the residual product, by products of the, uh, is this question, you know, incorporate those part, by products of the, you know, agriculture producers, as Mr. Taidul was then asking the same question. I've seen it, it stuff on the by products also. It is there. In that case, it is, it is complete on, if the definition permits, you know, we have to check the definition for 2.3.1 and 2.3.1. If a farmer produce rice, then uh, he can also produce uh, the straw. Straw, that's a corkuta. Uh, yeah. That is, yeah. Uh, can we get this uh, byproduct from this rice like that uh, other uh, uh, yeah, uh, crops? Is it okay or available? Yes, it, it is okay. So, uh, it byproducts comes from the farmers. If they produce the rice, the byproduct will come automatically. And we also collect the data related to the byproduct cost as well. So, this data will get from the sample sensor. And okay, I think Ida, Ida, will, Ida will be best able to uh, you know, uh, uh, highlight some problem the, okay. during the revenue, cal revenue calculation. So, okay. uh, crop, crop used for you know, uh, rent or something like that, there were something, some information during calculation of the revenue. So that part may be missing from this one. It is very straightforward, you know, about the costs, but okay. some maybe there may be some share cropping, there may be some exchange of uh, crops. Then okay. that, I don't know. Uh, Ida, Ida, you better check this question, you know. Okay. Have you shared this question yeah. with yeah. Ida and ask the team? 
Yes, perhaps it would be very useful if uh, if the questionnaire can be shared uh, with us, so we we have a look after the training. And uh, Saddam, you know, I will request you to share this questionnaire, both okay, of them okay. with, the, with the team. Okay. okay, yesterday, sir, yesterday we sent the presentation along with the, those questionnaire, yes. two questionnaire also sent. Both, both of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah we have it, we have it. Yeah, oh, fine, fine. Yeah. He, he yeah. shared the questionnaire before. That's good, that's good. Uh, uh, so any, uh, any other questions before, uh, Jacob, yes. I just, uh, just a comment. Like, I think the questionnaire is really, really, very, very uh, exhaustive to make, to, in order to calculate, you know, I mean, I mean, we have seen different countries questionnaire and the, I mean, this detail, the two details uh, of uh, the variables, maybe we found in a very few countries. Therefore, I, in my opinion, there are some some issues that to have to be addressed. You know, for example, my quick thing is like you know, labor on uh, livestock thing is not there. I can't see meat production. I can't see that type of things. And I mean, there are few things we need to fix within the existing questionnaire so that we will be able to go to compute. You know, the the indicator. Otherwise, I think the main the main important things are really uh, exhaustively there in this questionnaire. The way I I saw it. The only thing is to sit down look at the details of the questionnaire and organize you know now the critical problem is how can we really organize our data to to have that format that we showed you you know the the, the first day and the first and second day that's the critical thing and which is doable For, to, to be honest this is really really doable but the details are there except few things and i i, I as we have been saying we don't want to 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 recommend to launch a new survey a new thing a new approach because this the existing system with a minor fixing, we should be able to produce these indicators the way I see the, the questionnaire. Yeah. Okay, yes. Any other Thank you very questions? much. Thank you very much. Any other question? I have also a few, but I wait for any other question. If not, uh, I, I first, first question, I understand that the core module, which was conducted in 2019 has been done by complete enumeration, right? Yes. Okay, so that's uh, exactly what is recommended. So, and then you took a sample and conducted the, 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 the seven modules on that yes. sample in the 2020. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, number one. Now I have seen also that uh, doing, by doing so, you took the precaution to put the ID of the holding in the 2019 into the sample. So we can uh, link the two information from the core mm -hmm. and for, from the sample, which mm -hmm. is very good also, because now you, we can have the inventory from the complete enumeration, and then we can link that to the sample because the, the ID reflects both. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. My, I think this is com certainly comprehensive. The, the limitation is that this kind of uh, uh, census is conducted every maybe every ten years, so we may be able to compute the, all the indicators for one year. But the, the the issue is how we can move now. If you want to do the monitoring frequently, uh, how frequently will be conducted this kind of investigation. If it is uh, taking too much time, we should start looking at also uh, additional sources of information to compute the indicators between the two censuses. Otherwise, for some kind of a baseline computation, I think this is a completely uh, this is a almost exhaustive and we have almost all the variables available. Now, maybe when we see the second presentation, we we'll talk also about the household income expenditure survey. We can see if in between two censuses, we can find a survey or modify the survey in order to, to, to be able to compute the indicators between the two censuses. And my last comment would be that exactly as Jacob was saying, I think after this training, I see immediately one immediate action could be to work together uh, between your team and the team in FAO and start computing this indicator out of the information from the uh, sample census and the, the, the core census. 
So that would be one recommendation that I have, if you agree with that. Yes, I, we are totally agree on it. And very well said, Neman. So really appreciate. And we'll work together. OK. Thank you. OK, so any other comment, intervention? Uh, we need to go into the details of this question. As you know, this was a, a very good presentation that we need to look at the questionnaires in details. And I, as I said, after this uh, training, we can uh, keep in contact and start uh, looking at the data, as uh, Jacob was saying, how this data could be organized and uh, put in a format in a way that you can compute the indicators easily. Okay, if there is no additional question or comment, let's uh, take a break, uh, Faridun. Uh, Naman, I think you have an uh, announcement, yes, about the picture. Yes, exactly, I was going to, to do that. So we will make a break now. It was uh, requested yesterday that uh, at the end of this training, you have a group photo. So we've been struggling to find a technical solution for that. And maybe Faridun, you can quickly explain at the end of the meeting in uh, at uh, 17 hours in Bangladesh, we will take five minutes in order to do what uh, Faridun is going to explain now to take the, the group photo. Faridun, please. Thank you, Naman. Uh, just wanted to inform that I am about to send you a, another link, but not for the webinar, uh, but uh, for the meeting. And uh, I'm back. OK. Are we all back so that we can start the last presentation? Shalia, if you are ready, please uh, start your presentation. Uh, Ms. Katum? Alea, are you there? Alea, you may start presentation now. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, is it visible the uh, PowerPoint use slide? The, use this. Use the slideshow. Oh yes. Uh, now you can hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Welcome to the presentation on data gaps for computing and reporting on LCC indicators 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. I am Salia Khatwa, Deputy Director, working in Agriculture Wing of Bangladesh School of Statistics. Now our uh, topic related to LCC goal two, where we can find the goal is end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. Under goal two, there is the target 2.3. By 2030, double the agricultural productivity and in terms of small scale food producers, in particular, women, indigenous people, family farmers, pastoralists, fishers, including through secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and imports, knowledge, financial services, markets and opportunities for value addition, and non farm employment. Under target 2.3, there are two indicators. Indicator 2.3.1, that is volume of production per labor unit by classes of farming, pastoral, forestry, enterprise size. 
and the indicator 2.3.3 average income of small scale food producers by share and index in the state. For computing 2.3.1. We need volume of agricultural production, that is from crop, livestock, fisheries, and forestry, and constant sale price, number of labor days, and number of small scale food producers. We see that uh, there are three criteria for uh, computing small scale food producer. Number one criteria is Compute the operated length by summing the size, that is in factors of length calculated with permanent and temporary crop and cellulose. And the uh, rented in will be included and rented out will be excluded. And uh, the second option is hard size, that is converting the number of livestock in crop for each species in tropical livestock units. And uh, some of these intermediate variables we use by species to determine the total number of species. And the third option is from total revenue. The total revenue from all agricultural activities relevant to a food producer, that is crop, livestock, fishery, and forestry. If some of these components are not available, this should be flagged in the indicator metadata or in the methodological notes. And then some these revenues. And uh, after calculating the revenues, uh, we should uh, make the threshold that is. The corresponding holding agent special to identify small holders with respect to the. Uh, Are you moving your slide? Uh, no. This is 2.3.2. So I am now in 2.3.1. Uh, okay. I am talking about the three types of special for calculating small scale farmers, uh, producers. So from uh, intersection of three thresholds, we, we should take only the uh, jointly satisfying the three criteria. Uh, after that, uh, we should uh, Take the volume of production and divided by the number of small scale farmers. I think the formula is okay. I'm just checking. Average labor productivity is the agricultural output divided by labor input. That is total revenue divided by uh, labor days worked. But uh, yeah. so that's a gap for 2.3.1. We see the number of labor days that is absent in the household income and expenditure survey, but it will be available in agriculture sample census 2020. And another one is forestry production from household is not available in agriculture sample census 2020, but it is uh, also available in household income and expenditure survey. <coughs> So now I am uh, going to 2.3.2. For computing 2.3.2, we need data on volume of agricultural production, that is crops, livestock, fisheries, and forestry, 
then we need constant sale price uh, revenues cost of production and income and now uh, finally the number of small scale food producers <clears throat> For computing 2.3.2, we need data on cost of production from all the units and all the items at the time of production data. But you see, we have uh, cost of production surveys in several times uh, in, uh, for several crops, not at a time. And um, these Cost of production data we will get from the agriculture sample census 2020. Uh, so we think agriculture sample census 2020 will meet our data requirement. And uh, another one is uh, updated PLU conversion table is needed, and uh, updated PPP is needed. And uh, the pastoralist information is also absent in our data. And agriculture, uh, possible data sources, possible data sources may be agriculture sample census 2020 and the upcoming HIS, that is 2022. And we hope all data required to come from a single survey. And uh, the last one is conducting a comprehensive agricultural survey if possible. Current situation, currently we don't have baseline information of LCD 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. Also, we don't have any standalone survey for 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. Uh, we know that FAO has estimated is LCG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 using the household income and expenditure survey of 2010. And the thresholds are uh, one factor for land size, 1.6 PLUs for livestock, and 2632 PPP dollar for revenue. And uh, our uh, current attempt is using household income and expenditure service. Uh, we can try to compute uh, this indicator as a proxy indicator. Uh, these are the uh, household income expenditure survey module in 2016. That is, we have seen that there are uh, information about operating land. We have crop production, we have livestock and poultry production, and fish farming, fish capture, also farm forestry. And uh, there are some information of cost of production also. Maybe it is not complete, uh, but the problem is uh, the labor days are absent in this data set. So uh, this is uh, may not be the uh, national estimate, but we can use it as a proxy for uh, for comparing the uh, indicators. So I have a very brief presentation about the data gap. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions, please continue. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Katun, for this uh, very clear presentation. And uh, now we have uh, exactly so we are. I propose we combine the discussion on two things. First of all, the comments on the presentation. But uh, since this is the last presentation, if we can discuss a little bit what could be really the next steps, and uh, after this meeting, what could we do together in order to to start. Uh, computing the indicators and uh, fill the gaps uh, with the assistance of FAO, collaboration between FAO and the BBS in order to, to move one step ahead. So first, uh, we can start uh, looking at if there is any comment or uh, 
for clarification to ask to Mrs. Katum on the presentation. Please, the floor to the participants. In the meantime, I have a, a clarification. If I understood very well, this uh, household income expenditure survey is conducted every five years, more or less. Yes. Because I, I have that. questions. I have questions. In the okay. slide, uh, here is uh, Al Saleh said uh, uh, using his uh, his uh, two, uh, 2010 uh, data, they have calculated uh, uh, SDG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, how it is possible? There is uh, no information available about production cost of agriculture product and, uh, and number of days work against the product. This data is absent in the, uh, in his uh, the 2010. So how we, how it possible to calculate this? I cannot understand. Yeah, so the question is how FO was able to derive the yeah, 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 for 2010, 2010. Uh, missing data. So uh, basically it means that there uh, was someone from BBS involved in that calculation? No, uh, I know it from a presentation of FAO. There is a uh, resource paper on this uh, topic that FAO has calculated this as 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 from 2010 HAS as proxy data. So I know it from, but uh, I don't know if there anyone involved in this process from BPS or not. Aida, do you know anything about that? Is there some uh, metadata explaining how this was done by FAO? Hello, I don't know if Ida is around. Anyway, we can investigate that because uh, maybe we cannot reply immediately. Uh, to me, this work has to be done no, closely no, uh, between. Uh, uh, Naman? Yeah. Naman? Yes? Uh, yeah. I, I think uh, that uh, that information is not about 2.31 and 2.32. It ah. is on uh, small scale farmer identification of small scale farmers. Okay, just identifying only the small scale farmers, not computing the indicators. Uh, can I? Can I? It was part of your presentation, if you remember. Can I? Can I share my screen? I think in my presentation. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Can you can uh, Katun stop sharing your screen? It is stopped. Yeah, yeah. Jacob, it is stopped. Okay. okay. Uh, so I think it is. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's clear. Yeah, I think it is show. It is referring to this slide, Nama. You see, Bangladesh. Yeah, but this is uh, the income, you know. Yeah, it's not it's two, three. Huh? it's two, three, two. Yeah, average income, small scale producers, PPP per year, huh? It's two, three, two. Anyway, I see Arbab also, maybe Arbab knows something about that. Yeah, I can mention the paper that is uh, FAO statistics working paper, she is 18, for 18, 14. Methodology for computing and monitoring the sustainable okay. development goal indicators. I see. Yeah, yeah. One and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the, the reference that we share. If you look at the agenda, we yeah, this is the uh, same. This is the information. Uh, can okay. you see? I just. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We, we see yeah. because uh, we, uh, this is the document which is being revised now. But uh, I don't know anyone from FL want to, to to clarify a little bit on this idea or uh, you are muted idea. 
No, Aida has some problems with her microphone and she wrote in the chat. Uh, it was computed by Ruiz only for 232 and uh, 231 without involvement of PBS. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, anyway, what we can say at this stage, we yeah. could try to understand that. Probably, probably the meeting data, they somehow managed from other sources and they incorporated in the calculation. Maybe, maybe the lever day. They have taken yeah, from yeah. Any other maybe from the from the labor survey, some average yeah. service used. Yeah. So in that way they calculated this. Okay. Maybe they can use other survey data, not only but on, they can not only use his data, only his data using only his data, they cannot uh, estimate the SDG indicator 2.3.1 and 2. Only uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. That, yeah, I agree, Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Probably, yeah. you know, the missing data was incorporated from other other sources. Other sources, yeah. From, from other sources. So, again, you know, we are all statisticians. This statistical work you will need at some point anyway to fill in some some gaps. You need to see what is the impact of that, because it is very rare in a country to have exactly all the information needed. So you, you need to use some kind of uh, common sense and uh, using statistical techniques sometimes to try to get as close as possible to what you, you want. We, we make all the effort to collect exactly the data which is needed. But you know, it's so, so complex and you need to have, uh, you, you, you may end up having a very, very, complicated survey. So you need sometimes, uh, the, the example, simple example is the price. As Ida was mentioning, we talked about constant price, but usually you have, you, you miss this, uh, this data. So you need to take the price that you find and try to, to work on this price to get as close as possible to the constant price. Uh, so the rule is, uh, is a database, I understand, which is available in FAO, and uh, they take uh, information from uh, LSMS data, from over data, and then try to work out something, and probably that's uh, what they did for Bangladesh. Now, my proposal would be from now on, since we know that some data is available in Bangladesh, to work together, so this work should be done between FAO and the country working together so that is very, very clear uh, in the metadata section. We explain exactly what is the methodology, what are the missing data, and what is what approximation has been done in order to come up with uh, the numbers. Uh, okay, so that's for what I just wanted to say for the moment. Any other comment and, uh, on the presentation? Uh, Naman, maybe just a quick question. Maybe this is referring to Saddam's presentation, earlier presentation. He, yeah. we, we saw all the, the agricultural sensors, the, uh, the, the, the core module, as well as the sample thing. And he also mentioned about the annual agricultural survey type of thing, production, yeah. crop cutting, whatever. Yes. So if, if we hear a little bit more on that, uh, that survey, because that is annual thing, is there anything that we can really incorporate in that annual survey to, to, to get some of the variables? So if you can hear a little bit more on that annual regular survey on agriculture, it might really fill the gaps because you know there is uh, the HI uh, the household income expenditure is every five years, the census is every 10 years. There is one survey, annual agricultural survey on you know crop which is used even crop cutting for major crops. So if you can I mean, if you can see a little bit if there is any linkage that can be made between these two things. I think this question is for all participants, particularly to Saddam and uh, Ms. Mrs. Katum, but also anybody from BBS, uh, we have seen that this Ag census more or less is about every 10 years. The uh, income expenditure survey is about every five years. So already that's better than this. In a way, the frequency is uh, better than the, the census frequency. But the census is uh, more uh, complete and more exhaustive. Now we have seen also from the first presentation that there is a annual, the regular surveys by the agriculture wing, 
which include crop cutting, crop estimation survey, and uh, we understand that the crop cutting is done on the major crops, and the farmer estimation is used for the minor crops. So is there any scope here so that uh, in between the census and the household income expenditure survey, uh, some variables could be included in that uh, uh, annual survey uh, to get closer to the need data requirement for the, the 231 and 232. Mr. Allow them maybe also uh, answer this question. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Norman. Um, I think it is uh, difficult to include because our regular survey, which for estimating the um, production of different crops, major crops and minor crops, these are only for we uh, interviewed the farmers only for um, area, cultivated area for that crop and the production of that crop. Okay. And and um, and as yield rate for just like simple uh, question question from this uh, uh, regular seasonal crops mm -hmm. um, and estimation among and uh, this survey conducted after harvesting each crop. So it is a simple uh, form and yeah. a simple questionnaire. So it is difficult to include um, the question related to 2.3.1 um, for every crop and every survey. Would it be possible at least to expand a little bit, for example, to ask the farmer how many uh, cattle and uh, the livestock part, the inventory and the products, or that would be uh, overburdening the, 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 the survey? Actually, we some, we collect um, about uh, livestock and faulty data from the secondary sources. That is, it is it is from the we have a department of uh, livestock. Um, we collected data from that uh, from that offices, but we did not go to the, in regular. We do not go to the uh, household for livestock or poultry or fisheries. Okay. Now, I was thinking in the future, if the, if the BBS can work with FAO to see if uh, what could be the implications of uh, adding few more questions, uh, what would be the, the, the logistical costs and the training costs, etc. And uh, is it something feasible or not? Uh, is that, can we have a discussion on this possibility or not? Yeah, we can discuss. Actually, um, you know, we have a series of uh, training from uh, 27 or 28 June with your FAO team, first 2.1.1 and 2.1.2, which is conducted by Mr. Abdul Sattar Mondal um, and his team. Mm -hmm. Second was this 2.4.1, and Mr. Arbab Khan is maybe here. And third one is a uh, with the indicator 5A1, lead by Margarita Guerrero, and last, um, this one, is lead by you. And during talking with the uh, 2.4.1, yes. indicator, yes. Um, Mr. Arab Khan and his team uh, proposed us to seek FAO uh, assistance to conduct a standalone survey for 2.1. Then, uh, yeah. then we are planning to write a letter to your uh, director as to sixth division, and also we talked with uh, Miss Margarita Guerrero, and she also advised us to write. And we had we have a plan to integrated survey on two point four point one and five point a one a one, um, maybe in the in the year of 20, uh, 2022 or. First of 20, 2023, maybe we can go for a survey. If your team or oh, you suggest uh, uh, for 2.3.1 and 2. You have already seen our central census questionnaire. We have collected data in 
2020, it is last of November and December. So we are mm -hmm. uh, in the process of data entry because it is a manual entry, long used questionnaire. And due to mm -hmm. pandemic, uh, COVID-19, we, we are sometime as we have lost due to lockdown of our country, we have lost some time and we are now, according to our work plan, we are some behind the our work plan. But uh, for what you desire to, uh, to uh, conduct uh, 2.3.1 and 3.2 uh, survey, uh, well, I, if you suggest to, uh, to make a standalone survey next, if you assist, you can do. Or otherwise, if uh, it is possible to include in 2.4.1 Maybe in 2.4.1, there are 11 uh, uh, modules there. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Rob Khan will suggest or not. Can we include uh, the question, uh, questions in uh, a module one and two in 2.4.1? So whatever you suggest, and if you uh, assist us and guide us, we can uh, conduct a integrated survey on on this uh, uh, four indicator for a standalone survey for 2.3.1 and 2, 3.3.2 and 2.4.1 and 5A1. Um, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, can, can you hear me properly, Naman? I mean, just wanted to confirm. Yes. Okay. Uh, hear you properly. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Alauddin uh, for uh, for the update that you gave us on the previous trainings on the STG indicators uh, that were that were given to BBS by FAO team. Now, Naman, just to give you some perspective, uh, you know, 241 is, is an indicator that cut across the three dimensions, right? Economic, social, and environmental. And hence, you know, um, as per as per our discussions with BBS, I mean, um, it was it was in fact there was this mutual consensus amongst us that us integrating the questions from the survey module of SG241 in the current agriculture survey will, will, will make it too um, lengthy for it to be administered, right? Um, and hence, you know, lengthy survey means more, more cost and respondent fatigue, et cetera. So keeping in view all these considerations, uh, you know, um, uh, it was uh, in fact suggested by BBS as to whether we can we can have a standalone survey for two for one. Now, in the two for one, Just we one have question. when you say excuse me, uh, Arbab, when you say standalone, it means that you conduct it once or you keep conducting it every year. Um, this is not going to be conducted every year because the periodicity of two for one is three years. Okay, so okay, what's every we, three year or every four years? But yes, that that's that would be the plan. So 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 when when we say a standalone survey for SE two for one, the reporting cycle for two for one or the periodicity of the indicator is every three years. So th we then expect this survey to be repeated or to be administered every three years. Now, um, Mr. Alauddin mentioned as to whether we can use that survey for 231, 232, and 5A1. Uh, and I would say yes, because some of the information that is required for SG241, especially the sub-indicator on land productivity, um, you know, there, there we, are, we are collecting information on the output value or value of production of the agriculture holding. And hence, this is the information we very much needed for, for 231 and 232 as well, as for the numerator of the indicator is concerned. Now, there needs to be a few tweaks and adjustment because the scope of 241 is only confined to crops and livestock. And for 231, 232, I mean, we are talking broadly about agriculture and hence we include fisheries and forestry as well. So from this perspective, I mean, that, that there are certain things within that survey that needs to be modified for it to be able to collect information for, for both these indicators. Now, um, just for the sake of Mr. Alauddin, 5A1 is also one of the sub-indicators 
indicator within social dimension of, of, of 241. And hence, with a minor tweak and adjustments, we can collect information on 5A1 as well. So with this standalone survey, um, you know, um, if, 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 if BBS, uh, um, you know, uh, agrees and, and, and they decide to, to, to have it on, on, on regular basis, let's say, for example, every three years, then using the survey, we can collect information on four farm survey based SDG indicators, um, you know, 231, 232, 241 and 5A1. So um, if, if this is the idea, then of course, I mean, I would suggest that while designing or um, um, you know this 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 survey this is standalone survey, then we should perhaps have a joint discussion as to how how to build in the requirement of uh, you know two three one two three two and five one. Okay, thank you, uh, Arbab. I at this point I don't know, but I think FO should do some kind of homework because if all of us go to the country and ask to conduct a survey for a specific uh, indicator, I think that will not fly. This will not be practical. Probably there is a need uh, within FAO to, to go through all these indicators. I was thinking that the agris and the 50 by 30 were doing that because they were uh, focusing on the indicators to see if, uh, to, to facilitate the work at, in order to, if there is a need to have a survey, to make it as much as possible SDG friendly, covering as much SDGs as possible. And models could be the, 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 the IGRIS uh, or LSMS ISA, but I, I think there is some, some discussion within FAO in my view to, to, to try to to facilitate the work at country level. But that's just my, as an external consultant, that's my, my view. And, uh, but I see Amirul, you have something to also, some Yeah, you know, I just don't know, add with the, what Arbab just said, uh, because, you know, uh, Arbab, you know, Arbab rightfully, you know, you know, said that what about the surveys that are conducted by BBS, the module is already big. So, if we you know, try to add this one, we have two problems. One is sampling design problem, another one is load, extra load to the you know, uh, interview at the same time interviewer. So uh, one standalone survey incorporating these four indicators, if we can plan, that can you know, relate to my earlier suggestion that one big sampling frame for 2.71. And then from that one, we can just you know, uh, uh, select another sample that covers the restricted, restricted size of the the restricted definition of the 2.4.1 and 5.8.1. In the during the process, we'll just adjust the sampling weights, and that will, I think, you know, that standalone one standalone survey, initially incorporating the coverage of forestry fisheries, something like that, and then when you calculate this for 2.3.1, 2.3.2, and when you go for 2.4.1, from that survey, we'll all reduce the sample size, but at the same time, we adjust uh, the weight to represent the national level. So by this one, one. Uh, survey, standard survey uh, should uh, actually serve the purpose. But you know, as you uh, said rightfully, uh, B B FAO headquarters can, you know, the unit lead may discuss among themselves how better it can be fit. It, it will reduce the burden, if, uh, resource burden for every country if you can do so. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the master sampling frame is one of course, but uh, Jacob, you want to say something? Just a minor point. I think this is, you know, we need to discuss this really further, you know, the, uh, within the FAO and within the countries. I think in general, the uh, FAO standpoint is not to, to, to bring something new, to, to build on the existing system. That's what we are really promoting as, as much as possible. And instead of like, you know, you know, recommending with this thing, like standalone surveys for, you know, two, three indicators together, you know, all those things are really, really good in, in theory, even for each indicator, that would have been very ideal to be, to be honest. But we need to make sure that, you know, you know, especially the resource, where are we getting these resources to do those type of things, okay? And if it is like, you know, if, if you can have a special project for each of these things with a resource that FAO is providing to the countries, I can understand that can be easily implemented. 
But you know, in most of the cases, this type of things, I mean, the, the, I mean, it, in order to make it sustainable, continuous, you know, countries have to own it. Therefore, I think in mo as much as possible, we need to rely on the how to really improve the existing system in the country so that we'll be able to produce uh, the required indicators. That is why we are really starting to understand what I know. This discussion this morning really helps us to understand, you know, what's coming up from uh, household income consumption survey, what's coming up from the uh, Cultural uh, census, and you know we are investigating if there if there's something we can really you know link with the annual agricultural service, so that you know within the existing system to produce some something which are really important to address this this data needs. I mean that is you know we need I I, I don't think we need to finish this discussion by, by today, but you know this is the type no, no, of no, things no, we need no, we need no, to no. brainstorm. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Either uh, are you still muted or are you? Now you can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, now yes. Ah, finally, okay. So no, I, I fully agree with, with Jacob's comments. I think this, uh, this needs further discussion and, and, and if possible, we should try to, to use what is, what is already there instead of design new data, ad hoc data collection system. So perhaps we really need to coordinate also with uh, Margarita, with Arbab to see mm -hmm. how we can we can join efforts. Uh, yeah. yeah, in a way that is sustainable for, for the country because yeah, we cannot design a survey only to compute some indicators, so. Yeah, okay. So I think concretely, first of all, uh, there are very positive uh, things in Bangladesh. One, we have this census of agriculture. Now, it's, uh, I understand that the processing is not uh, complete, but I hope in coming months, the, the 2020 uh, sampling part of it will be processed and the data will be available. I understand also that the, the, for the core census, at least the data should be available from the 2019. And this is a very rich source of data, probably uh, at least to get some kind of baseline I think this information would be, in my view, very useful in starting the process. So that could be started immediately because the, the data, at least the core data is available and the, the team is working on the sample data and the FAO team can liaise with uh, Bangladesh to start working on that. We also have the household income expenditure survey even if it's not annual, but at least uh, the frequency is every five years. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also somehow good. And uh, this can be another complementary source of data that can be used to start compiling the indicators. Now, for the future now, I think there should be, in my view, discussion within FAO and the countries, how we really want to assist the countries uh, in putting in place, uh, as uh, I think Jacob or uh, Ida was saying, some sustainable way of uh, getting the data needed for the indicators. So to see what are the different approaches, uh, Amirul was talking about the, the, the master sampling frame approach or uh, the agris with the modular approach, etc. But first of all, to see, uh, to put all the indicators on the table and see what are the requirements and what are the indicators that can be joining forces in a way in order to have, uh, uh, to, to see existing surveys, how can we uh, add some variables in order to cover as much as possible those indicators. But to me, uh, an action plan could be immediately to start working with Bangladesh on the available data to go through the process of computing 231 and 232, particularly using the agriculture census data and the household income expenditure survey. And then in the future to, to maintain the dialogue between FAO and Bangladesh, because there are many, many indicators coming. We all come and do training and we want the data for our indicators. So 
how can we make the work easier for uh, BBS? So there should be some discussion within FAO and discussion between FAO and Bangladesh to come up with a plan uh, which is uh, sustainable to fill the gap in terms of data. Uh, is that something which makes sense? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, at this point, uh, this is a good proposition because, you know, this and you know, after this uh, session, our communication will be still, you know, alive uh, back and forth from the headquarters and BBS. Uh, they can, you can, you know, discuss it yourself. And first, you can uh, look at the questionnaire of agriculture census that is shared by Mr. Satham. Uh, from your exactly. side, just look at it if it is, uh, you know, possible to create uh, indicators 2.3.1, 2.3.2 for this year. And then if it is for this baseline, then future service may be planned or integrated with other other regular service. That in that case, you can also suggest in which survey will be best at where this module. Uh, uh. So I think you know side by side, uh, BBS is writing. I think so far I understand BBS is writing to uh, the agrees uh, to get, get support uh, from from them to uh, you, know, you know report on 2.4.1 and 5.8.1. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, uh, I think it can also be considered if 2.3 and 2.3.1 can be considered. So resource-wise, resource BBS is uh, not uh, capable of uh, proceeding further on this indicator you know, due to the COVID you know, shock and something like that. But BBS is now, as we have given the training, BBS is now well equipped uh, with this you know, kind of idea, idea and then calculation procedures. So with little help from uh, headquarter, I think BBS will be able to do that one. Let uh, BBS write to agrees on this too. Uh, initially, uh, uh, with Arba, we discussed it, and also Margarita suggested to in, in, in incorporate this too. Let's uh, see what uh, response coming from agrees are also the headquarter. And by this time, you, you three team talk together. If it is feasible to in club these two indicator to that one, you can also plan that one. But you know, without your support. I, not only uh, technical, also some resource support. BBS uh, probably not in a position to conduct immediately some of the indicators because a lot of the proposal they have uh, given to the uh, in, to the government, it is uh, waiting for their response. So uh, we, we need you know your support for the time being actually. And once it is on track, then subsequent surveys may be uh, supported by the government. That 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 is the best I can say for the time being. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amirul. I think Arbab was wanted to also comment. Arbab? Yes, on, on this very point, uh, you mentioned that we should have an all encompassing 360 degree strategy as for internally FAO is concerned. While once we reach out to countries for, for providing them support on the SDG indicators that we are custodian of. Then, you know, from this perspective, while uh, while we were discussing two for one, we discussed, you know, agri-survey program and 50 by 2030 initiative. Now, Naman, just, uh, you know, remember that in both these initiatives, right, um, the needs of 231, 232, 241, and 5M1 are already built in. So these are already reflected in the questionnaire of both these two initiatives. Now, Bangladesh being eligible, country for the 50 by 2030 program, what we suggested to them was to write to the, to the 50 by 2030 team, because sooner or later FAO will, um, you know, extend uh, support to uh, Bangladesh um, in terms of upgrading or improving their agriculture statistical systems. So from this perspective, in the longer term, FAO has a strategy for improvement of agriculture statistical systems of developing countries, of which one is Bangladesh, uh, an eligible country. And hence, we think of that as a long-term strategy for, for, uh, for Bangladesh to make its uh, reporting systems more robust as for agriculture statistics. Long time is how many years or how many? When you say long time, is it? Uh, uh, yeah, so this is... Been Exactly. So, so this is this is a very pertinent question, and hence we 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 uh, while we were discussing this within the within the context of two four one, I I I I mentioned it to BBS that please write to 
um, the uh, 50 by 20, 30 team immediately so that they can they can revert to you and we can come come back to you as FAO with a with a sort of uh, 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 time frame, right? As to when we can we can support you uh, in terms of improving your your systems. So that's that's something which is which is not in our um, you know as as being focal point of individual SDG that is not within within our mandate, but it is certainly within the mandate of uh, of the 50 by 2030 team and, and agri survey program. So they can better reflect on the time frame as well as the commitment. Yeah, but uh, as focal point, I think we should also advise the the, the management of, uh, They have a, a, a dialogue with uh, the, the country as an FAO or as an FAO statistic division or, or whatever. So that uh, I think this is a very good uh, perspective if the 50 by 2030 can be, if uh, Bangladesh is interested and make a request and this can be rolled out in Bangladesh as soon as possible. To me, that will solve a lot of problems. Uh, instead of uh, each one of us uh, as focal point going and asking for a, a single uh, standalone survey, this would be a more uh, strategic approach to filling the, the data requirement for the computation of the indicators. So as far as uh, I think for our training, probably I would suggest that we make a recommendation in this sense if you all agree uh, for FAO to consider that uh, uh, the data requirements so that uh, the 50 by, of course, the request has to come from uh, BBS if the Bangladesh is interested, but uh, to look at this uh, more uh, integrated approach of uh, working with the countries. But that could be really the, the solution in my view to, 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 to avoid this. Uh, uh, this meal approach of uh, each indi indicators going to the country to, to have a, a dedicated survey. That would be very costly. And um, I'm not sure, all, maybe Bangladesh, but I'm not sure many countries will be able to, to support that kind of uh, the surveys. But anyway, so we are now really in the core of the what we do next after this meeting. So if you think, uh, that this could be a good approach. Uh, we can uh, stop the technical discussions here. And then we, we try to summarize or to wrap up the meeting. And after that, we have the group photo uh, before closing the, the, the meeting. But uh, maybe we cannot take, uh, exhaust all the discussion on this topic uh, now but let's keep uh, yes, what we can do you know because you know we have to enter to uh, enter to that you know uh, request for the you know uh, photo photo session we have to uh, leave this session so during the photo session we can we can say a few words if you want to before we close okay yeah so, but before closing i just want i i was taking some notes and i will sh show this in the screen as uh, possible conclusions and next steps for this uh, and Naman, one one question and do you suggest that you know bbs also write uh 2.3.1 2.3.2 .2 in the request uh that is uh, being sent to agris along with 2.4.1 and 5.1 should they include the include this indicator to, uh, in their request uh i don't know mr Alaudin, how should we go about this Actually, Mr. Amir, uh, but we are seeking your suggestion. Can can we write, or we can only write for 2.4.1 and 5.8.1, and later on 2.3.1 and 3.2? We are uh, we are not need your suggestion. Uh, Arba, we can give you suggestions. We can include uh, uh, these uh, four indicators. 
So, what would be your yeah, suggestion? So, so, my suggestion would be that uh, you know BBS write to FAO and uh, you know copy all of us, right? Uh, uh -huh. The focal points, and write to the to to Christoph and 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 Flavio who are who are representing. Oh, uh, you know, I think they should write to Pietro and to Jose. Perfect. To to perfect. Christoph. They should have perfect. Target the highest level of sure. uh, FAO sure. for decision making. This is a strategic decision. No problem. So, yeah. so that, that that's even better. So, so and as for Agri Survey Program on fifty by twenty thirty is concerned, I mean by default, all and what I was trying to say earlier that in their questionnaires, in their modules, all the needs and requirements of all these four indicators have already been captured and integrated. So once once FAO commends technical support um, under 50 by 2030 or Agri Survey Program, by default, Bangladesh will uh, be ready to report on, on all these four farm survey based SDG indicators. So, so from this perspective, I mean, um, um, even without, even if BBS doesn't mention these four SDG indicators, I, I mean, they will get uh, can say just in general, SDG indicators in general. Yeah, they need support of FAO to, in order to so we can take that and uh, look at the details. But I would say that, uh, Mr. Alaudin, if BBS can uh, certainly it will be go, go through the FAO office in Bangladesh. So, Mr. Amirul would be also looking at that so that, that the, an official request is sent by Bangladesh to the management of uh, statistics uh, units in FAO to help Bangladesh in uh, dealing with the, the, the SDG indicators, something like in this line. Okay, may we direct to yeah, Mr. Mr. Jose Rosario, uh, Rosario, Director of Statistics, or Mr. Petro Ganari? Oh, to whom? You can write to both of them. In my view, I don't know. I don't yes. know the politicians. Yes. Any of them? So, Any of them? The, both, both of them. Both. I, I would you write, that. you write both of them and copy you know, FAO or Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. FAO Bangladesh should be. We can in, write in one the, of them, then I can go uh, copy to an, uh, others or, or individual letter to, to that uh, to <laughs> director and chief statistician. No, you can write to both of them in my view. Okay, so Naman, normally, yes. um, I, I think the channel is like um, to contact the chief statistician to ask uh, okay. the FAO, I, I, I think it's like this, FAO technical assistance on specific topics. So in this case, it's the implementation of the, the agri survey. Right, for the, the yeah, okay. and then I, I think, yes. And then in that uh, case, yeah. you can you can address to Chief Statistician Pietro Gennari, but make sure that uh, also Jose mm -hmm. is put at. We can uh, copy to Jose and uh, FAO Bangladesh. Yes. The chief office is uh, responsible yeah. for the indicators, no? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we, can, mm -hmm. and we can send a, a letter to also you. Uh, uh, you want to put as a letter? Or... I think you know it is better to copy you. It, it, you, you know, you and then Narbab and then Margarita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's you CC. put mm -hmm. all the focal points uh, in CC. In the CC, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would suggest to uh, add to the email list Sangeeta as well. She being a regional yeah, statistician. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sangeeta should be in the loop. Uh, we are copying all our agenda, everything to Sanjita. So she ultimately will be the responsible for the, the activities in the region. Okay, so uh, can we? Can I show quickly what I have put together uh, as a tentative? Uh, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. But let me make it bigger, a little bit. Bigger, 
Okay, so this is uh, just taking from what we showed the first day as the objectives and outcomes of this meeting. So we, we said first one is the a number of participants from, uh, uh, initially it was only BBS, but now we have a participant from BBS, Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Food that were uh, technically trained on the concepts and the methodology for identifying small scale food producers and computing SDG 231 and 232. So that's the number one. Number two is underlying data issues, including how to go from the questionnaires to clean the data, to organize the data, to aggregate at farm level, and to organize the database before making the compilation of uh, the indicators. I think we went through all this, and it looks like the participant understood very, very well the logic and I, I think they are able to reproduce this uh, with some maybe minor assistance from FAO. And this was done through presentations, discussions, practical exercises, and demonstrations. So that's the number one. And then the second one is the available data in existing surveys in Bangladesh and the requirement for the micro data that is needed to compute and report on 231 and 232 uh, was uh, identified and discussed. So this was our discussion of today. And then the, the gap, uh, particularly in the last presentation by Mrs. Katum, the existing data gap has been identified and we just finished a discussion on a possible action plan in order to fill the gap with the FAO assistance. So that was the, the four main, three main uh, results of the meeting. Now regarding the next steps, uh, here I am trying to put what we are doing with uh, other countries. So since there are some available data in Bangladesh, particularly from the two sources, the Act Census, and the household income expenditure survey. The first step would be to designate a focal point and a team in BBS that could work closely with the FAO team on uh, using the, not using the Capverde or other data, but using the data from Bangladesh in order to compute SDG uh, 231 and uh, 232. And I put here, uh, this can be should be done by August 2021, but I'm not sure this is realistic. Maybe we can at least start with uh, the household income expenditure survey, which data is available because the census data, the processing is not completed yet, if I understood. And then to initiate the compilation of the SDG 231 and 232 with the existing micro data. Uh, from uh, household income expenditure survey and uh, agriculture census by 15 September. And maybe by that time, the application that we discussed yesterday would be validated so that the big work would be to organize the data, etc. And once this is done, you just uh, almost uh, push a button and you, you get the indicators with the application. Or if you want to develop uh, your own application, that's also fine. And then after that, uh, the last part of our discussion now was to see how we can prepare a short action plan on how to improve and expand ex existing surveys to include uh, the missing variables for computing SDG 231 and 232 with assistance from FO. Maybe we should modify a little bit this uh, statement uh, in line with uh, what uh, Arbab has uh, suggested so that uh, to ask uh, if VBS could write to, to FAO for assistance in uh, uh, improving the statistical system to be able to collect the data needed for the computation of the, the series of indicators, including 231 and 232. So this is very briefly what uh, 
I propose as the conclusions and next steps. I don't know if you, you agree or you have any comment on it, so that this is what we can take away from the, the training. Thank you, Mr. Naman, for your um, nice presentation and your um, our future action plan. About, but in, in your next step, uh, uh, your uh, point two, yeah. I initiate the compilation of SDG 23.1 to 3.2 with existing microdata from HIS 2016 and the agriculture. But the agriculture census data is not available now. It will take some time. Okay. But uh, sure. our team, maybe if you guide our team, can work with only HIES data, but it is available, but uh, agriculture census data is not available. So okay. it is. Uh, okay. it will be a partial work, maybe. Okay. I think it could be seen as a kind of exercise also, uh, so real exercise, mm -hmm. so that the, the team of BBS go through all the process using real data from uh, Bangladesh instead of uh, fictitious data, so that when when the other data are available, they can just run the the, the, the system themselves, and uh, so we can correct that and put only the household survey. Sixteen. Yeah, Any but there is a there is a data gap in the household survey because there is yes. no labor days and uh, some related data. Forestry data is there, is not there. Yeah, yeah, no. but but uh, Naman, I think uh, we can still start, you know, the preparatory activities because we have we have there's a questionnaire there, you know, for the census, understanding the questionnaire, trying to develop the program to rearrange the data. It really mm -hmm. requires some time. Therefore, let's start with the preparatory activities, and once the data is ready then it's just a matter of bringing the data and running the, the quotes, okay? Therefore, since we have at least a complete questionnaire, understanding the questionnaires and understanding the logic, how to prepare the data for the competition, it requires some time. Therefore, we can still start work, uh, working on this, uh, on this uh, approach. But the actual data, yes, we, can, we should be able to wait a little bit until the census is completed. So how about modifying the sentence to say, in a sense, the, the process, of, uh, for uh, computing, so that the process include uh, all the work of going from the questionnaire and uh, looking at the, first of all identifying the variables, as Max has shown uh, yesterday. So how do we go from the questionnaires, from the what variables to take, and how we organize the database? And uh, so the the when we get the data. It, uh, we are ready for filling in the data and then computing the, the indicators. So only the process can be started, at least for the census. How about that, Mr. Alaudin? And as to the process, and after getting the complete data, then we can compute. Exactly, exactly. Just to maintain the, you know, the, yeah. the, the communication. Part. We can, we can communicate. Yeah, yeah. We can and, develop. I, I think we may have even a small sample data from the census as well, not the complete one, but yeah. just a sample data. We can so we can have with the sample data. We can start the work. You know, yeah. we don't need to have the complete data sets. So with the sample data, everything will be completed. Then when we have the complete data, we run the code you know, on the, the, the complete data. Okay. So with that, we will uh, modify a little bit those two, two last sentences, the, the, the compilation and also the action plan uh, thing to reflect uh, what Mr. Alaudin just said and also what uh, Arbab has uh, proposed. So that uh, with that, uh, can we agree on this? and uh, go to the closing just one um, can i make just one point you know, uh, related to this uh, issue yeah of this agris approach i think it is a good thing we need to give it a try but i i still really want to re-emphasize you know on relying on the existing system to be to be honest i i, I mean this might be taken as a personal comment but it, i really really wanted to push to rely on the existing systems the agris thing, okay, we'll try. You know, I just looked at you know the agri the 50 by 20 30 program, you know, what they have so far. 
they are already occupied with 24 countries and the program is covering up to 2024 it looks like very tight therefore you know i mean we should i'm not i'm, I'm not saying that we should really push you know we, could, we, could, we should be able to find a, a way to convince the, say, the fio management to include bangladesh but at the same time we need to be to be aware of you know where we are in terms of 50 by 2030 as well so you know let, i mean i just wanted to to, to to give this thing as an input for future discussions okay so i think we'll work together on to uh, Jacob are about to see how we can formulate this uh, last point of the action plan and uh, to be as realistic as possible and uh, see what FAO really can do concretely to assist uh, the country in dealing with this data gap. Data gap. Okay, if there is no more uh, comment. Maybe it's the time. Maybe Ms. Saleh, yes. you want to say something? Saleh? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I just want to uh, tell you and only about the case data set. Uh, I think the sample census data set will take time. So, firstly, we can uh, take initiative to calculate from SIS data. For the missing data, we can use. Uh, as proxy from uh, any other household survey, maybe from Bangladesh or it may be from the regional data set. So if FAO can provide us the do file in startup, then we can uh, go forward. Exactly. So that's uh, the same point that was. So we can start the process. And then as we go within the, the questionnaires and the missing data we can find what is the statistical way of uh, dealing with uh, the, these problems and how to get a proxy to, to compute uh, the indicators uh, Arbab want to add something also yeah just one point naman and i totally agree with 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 yakub just mentioned right in terms of uh, the 50 by 20, 2030 team fully occupied in terms of them supporting countries. So uh, how about we, we uh, you know, subdivide the next steps into short, medium and long-term steps, right? So in the short term, we can have maybe, you know, some solution or some proposal. And then in the medium term, there could be uh, a couple of uh, uh, proposal and then for the long-term, right? Long-term being, I assume that Agris and 50 by 2030 uh, initiative will be more of a long-term solution. Uh, maybe, you know, FAO will not be able to, and this is just my assumption, right? So only the team can confirm the, the but, you know, my assumption would be that they, they would not be able to support Bangladesh right away from the get-go from the next year. So, um, okay. So uh, basically, concretely, we put ahead, uh, we put the two first points under the short-term uh, uh, activities mm -hmm. and then the last point would be put under the medium term uh, activities and we need to reformulate it is that uh, responding to you uh, arbab to your concern yes yes absolutely okay yeah. so with that i think we are a bit <laughs> over the time but it was for a, a good cause uh, let's now go to the the, the closing. So if uh, Dr. Alaudin and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Amrul, Alaudin for BBS and uh, Amrul for FAO want to okay, say- Okay, okay, you know, let me, let me say first and then uh, uh, Mr. Alaudin may conclude from BBS side. Uh, okay. Just to know a few words, we are already, you know, have a, you know, uh, we crossed the time time limit. So with few words, I just I want to thank you know you, thank the headquarter and Naman and your team, Ida and uh, other other you know resource persons, uh, those who were involved. And you know it was a fruitful uh, training actually. And so far all of the trainings you know on 2.1.1, 2.1.2, even 2.4.1, 5.8.1, all are interactive and very much successful and. BBS learned a lot because you know their, their capacity is just you know enhanced a lot. But uh, if uh, it is not 
turn into action immediately. So this learning may you know, fade out one time actually. That is my worry. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, we are successful. Then this program uh, that was you know uh, taken from FAO uh, headquarters uh, supporting Bangladesh, uh, it is so far so successful. Apart from this COVID COVID impact, otherwise uh, this uh, training would be face to face. Uh, the learning would be much more efficient. But still, uh, I think you know uh, the training is very much successful. From my side, I am satisfied because you know B uh, BBS is also participating in these boards and uh, practical sessions. So there is some skill uh, developed that will be, you know, uh, permanent asset for BBS. So with this word, I want to thank BBS and also line ministries, the Ministry of Food, Ministry of Agriculture, they have nominated some participants. Uh, I hope they have also learned something from this one. And uh, though not present our FAO Bangladesh team, I, want, I also want to thank FAO Bangladesh part because I am, I am a temporary uh, consultant for, for them. But FAO Bangladesh is, is a long-standing friend of BBS. They, whatever BBS is requesting, they are trying their best to pursue to the headquarters and then uh, taking some support. And with this one, I also want to thank our chief statistician because you know this is this was a long you know uh, discussion with him because he thought initially that enough training has been given to uh, Bangladesh. Why more? It was his concern. But you know, I then uh, I uh, and BBS also uh, explained you know all of the trainings not uh, dedicated to BBS. There are several trainings uh, given to other ministries, other uh, sections of the uh, you know, ministries, but BBS did not get all of the trainings. So uh, this time only, very much dedicated trainings for BBS. So BBS uh, learned a lot and capacity was they, they have learned. Uh, with this uh, few words, I will request BBS to keep contact with all of the focal points. Now I think you know the communication is very much e easier. Whenever you need any support, any suggestion from headquarters, please write to them. Uh, or even if you want to, uh, Tag me in the, in the discussion. I am always there, even if I am not with, uh, with FAO uh, in future. So I will be always there with you. Uh, with these few words, I want to thank all of you uh, for this successful training. Not only uh, today's you know, training, this two indicator, also as Arbab is here. And through this session, I want to thank all of the focal points for all of the uh, six indicators. Initially, five were, five were in plan, but we could uh, handle six, six trainings. This, this is a kind of you know, extra. For us, you know, total six trainings. So thank you very much, you know, for uh, giving such, such such effort from your side, and thank you, BBS and other plan ministers. And thank I you, um, uh, um, thank you, Amirul and uh, Mr. Alaudin. You want to also say some words? Mm, thank you, Professor Amirul, and I also thank you, Mr. Naman, uh, Miss Aida, and uh, Mr. Faridun, and. Your all team, uh, two, three point one, and three point uh, three team, uh, to giving us uh, this training and our participants learned a lot from you. And I also thanks to uh, others um, uh, team. Just uh, one team representative, Mr. Arab Khan is here, two point four point one, and uh, uh, team uh, two point one point one and two point one point two. And five day one, I also thanks to uh, all uh, in favor of, uh, from BBS and also to FU headquarter and FU, FU Bangladesh to arrange such a wonderful training uh, for us and our participants learned a lot. And I just uh, it is the initi initiative, and we can move forward in future. We will communicate each other, and I hope. We will get support uh, from you in e every time, and so that we can compile the SDG indicators. We can uh, uh, support the data uh, for SDG indicators. And I, I also again thanks to Professor Amirul to organize this uh, in such a nice nice way. And he is always a friend of BBS, and he, he is always with BBS. And I hope all of you will with BBS for calculating these uh, indicators, uh, collecting data and compiling the indicators. And hope our communication will uh, continue. Yeah. Uh, so thank you again and thank you all. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Alaudin and Mr. Alaudin, and you are right. I think Dr. Anu. Before, before we close, that. before we close, you know, let me especially thank Mr. Ya you know Yakub, because you know sometimes I had I had 
to go to him, please, you know, speed up the process from the headquarters because uh, sometimes, you know, I, I, I was waiting for response because all of uh, the team in, at the headquarters are very busy. So time-wise, we are also lagging behind. Our program will finish by November. So we have to finish all of the trainings. I sometimes, you know, requested, you know, Mr. Yacoub, uh, he is a long-standing, you know, friend of BBS, I think, you know, uh, through the MS project. Yeah. So always, true. whenever I find any problem, I always write to write to him. So I, thank I you very saw, much, Jacob, again. And hopefully, I saw, I saw uh, that you copy always to to Jacob. And uh, Dr. Amirul, you have been very very instrumental to this because uh, I see you have been really pushing this uh, training. Uh, once uh, we had some uh, delays, etc., you come back. Uh, so that was very 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 useful for. Uh, organizing this training and uh, I just want to thank everybody also all the participants uh, to thank also the, the, the BBS, the Minister of Agriculture, the Minister of Food and uh, particularly the FAO office also for, uh, for this uh, organizing this training and uh, it has been a very intensive and interactive session sessions because uh, it was not just one way uh, lecture that it was really interactive and this is what we wanted from the beginning so i hope by now the concepts uh, methods and uh, uh, data issues uh, are uh, much clearer uh, and i'm sure because uh, the participant went through the process and uh, finally we agreed on a uh, kind of uh, next steps uh, in order to keep the momentum. So we don't want to lose the momentum. So we want to, after this training, not to everything to, should die, but to continue the collaboration and the momentum for this, uh, what we had uh, capitalized during this, uh, this training. So thank you all. And now we move to the last uh, part of this uh, training, which is the group photo. And I give the floor to Faridun to tell us how we should uh, do in order to take this photo. Thank you, Naman. Uh, as you will see, I sent to everyone the link with the passcode. You need to go out from this uh, webinar and uh, log in with the link which I sent you. It was sent uh, in three o'clock of uh, Bangladesh time or around this time. So for now, we should go out from this link. So from we all go out and we click on the link and go, put the passcode and then we take it from there. Yes. The passcode is from one okay. to six, let us leave. One, two, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let us leave and then join rejoin. Yes. Using the new link. Okay.